Regularly scheduled programming will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you the following ABC Sports Special. NCAA College Football. Tonight, a pair of unbeatens square off top-ranked Buckeyes of Ohio State against the UCLA Bruins. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet announces a new kind of American car, the new Chevy Chevette. By Metropolitan Life, where the future is now. By Goodyear, the makers of the polished steel radial tire. It keeps its feet even in the rain. And by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, St. Louis, Missouri. Brewers of Budweiser. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. The city of Los Angeles, California, changing colors as a hot October day fades. The old devil wind, the Santana, sweeping in from the desert, having pushed the temperatures past the 90-degree mark today in the area of the Coliseum, where tonight's game will be played. As we near kickoff time, it's still very hot on the floor of this massive old arena, but it will cool rather quickly as we move into the dark hours. These two teams have met twice previously, and the series is even at one and one. Tonight's game will be played on real grass, and it's the first time the Buckeyes have worked on the real thing since the last Rose Bowl game. This will be the first time Ohio State has played a game under the lights since 1959 when they lost to USC here at the Coliseum 17 to nothing. The Ohio State Buckeyes are top-ranked in the UPI coaches' poll, having won their first three, beating Michigan State, Penn State, and North Carolina. UCLA opened with wins over Iowa State and Tennessee, then slipped to a 20-20 tie last week at the Air Force Academy. The frolicsome sounds of a major football game can be heard all over this area of Southern California right now, and the crowd is still pouring into the Los Angeles Coliseum. It'll go upwards of 65,000, maybe more tonight. Certainly the attractiveness of this matchup would dictate that. In the case of Ohio State, it's the usual tough, steady team winding out and play good, solid defense. The Bruins will probably gamble more and probably throw more. This game tonight also matches two of the prime Heisman Trophy candidates for 1975. The man who won it, number 45, as a junior last year, Archie Griffin on the right, and UCLA quarterback John Shara at the left. Archie Griffin, knocking all the offensive records over at Ohio State, continuing his brilliant running and leadership for the Buckeyes. He's gained 100 yards now in 24 consecutive games. He's hale and hearty for tonight's game. John Shara is not hale and hearty. He suffered a shoulder injury against Tennessee. It showed some last week in that 2020 tie against the Air Force Academy, but John looked hungry and fit and healthy in the pregame workout, so he says he's going to turn it on and let it go tonight. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. I'll be calling the play for tonight's ball game. Bill Fleming and Jim Lampley working along the field. And in tonight's ball game, we might say, in talking about Heisman Trophy candidates, that other prime candidate, Joe Washington of Oklahoma, had a big afternoon as the Sooners prevailed and remained undefeated today against Colorado 21-20. We did have an upset this afternoon of considerable dimension as Michigan State went to South Bend and beat Notre Dame 10-3. You can always find an objective partisan that'll talk about upset. There's been a lot of talk about upset here in Southern California this week because they feel the UCLA Bruins, with a major effort, can pull it off. But when you play Ohio State, you've got to play in the trenches and play very well. Let's bring in our expert commentator for a comment on that particular point. Ex-Oklahoma coach, one of the great ones of all time, Bud Wilkinson. And Bud, you better be ready to dig it out when you get in against the Bucks. Well, you better be able to dig it out against anybody along the front if you're going to win. But Ohio State uh, plays what I would call sound football in every respect, and to enlarge on that just a little bit, uh, so often people forget that the name of the game is to make a first down. Uh, Woody Hayes has never forgotten that, which is why he's been one of the great coaches and coaches in football over the last 25 years. Uh, Ohio State offense, if you play a normal defense, is just going to grind it out on you. And the gamble, as you said, Keith, uh, that UCLA must take, uh, when they have the ball, they've got to go for the big play. But defensively is where they've got to take the big gamble. If you line up and play them normally, they'll just eat you to death. 
Five yards, four yards. They've got Mr. Inside and Johnson, and they got Mr. Outside and Griffin, and Griffin runs inside pretty well, too. As the UCLA Bruins come onto the field, it's important that John Shara is feeling well. But I think, speaking of edges, and you look to the little points, Ohio State probably has the soundest kicking game in college football. Well, they've got a great uh, place kicker in Claiborne who can knock it in from 35, 40 yards out. Their punter, Skaldani, is the best in the country. Last year, he averaged 45 and a half yards per kick. Interestingly enough, did not enter the statistics as a leading kicker because Ohio State's offense was so good, he did not kick the ball enough times. He kicked only 31 times in 12 games, and that didn't qualify. Not enough times at bat, so to speak, to use baseball parlance. The way Ohio State's been controlling the opposition so far, they just gave up their first touchdown last week. So we know the defense is sound, which we also, I think, would have to know that UCLA's got to put the ball here. Well, UCLA's offense, I think, is excellent. Uh, against Tennessee, uh, which I consider to be a fine football team, they moved the ball extremely well as we saw two weeks ago. I'm not concerned about their ability to put the pressure on the Ohio State defense, but I'm very concerned about their ability to stop Ohio State. How well the Bruins' defense plays is the key to how well they'll be in the game. UCLA with a lot of injuries along their offensive front. The teams are on the field. We'll kick it off in a moment. You are watching two automatic typewriters in action. One is the best known. The other has just been introduced. The new one can automatically type in both directions at the rate of up to 350 words per minute. The automatic typewriter that's twice as fast is made by Xerox. That's right. Xerox. And I don't smoke, but I still enjoy tobacco. Smokeless tobacco, like gold here. Just a pinch between my cheek and gum, and I get full tobacco pleasure. And since I don't light up, I can use it doing almost anything. Let's hit him! Let's hit him! So go smokeless with Skoll, Copenhagen, or Happy Days Men. The tobaccos you don't have to smoke to enjoy. The Ohio State Buckeyes have won the toss, and they have elected to receive. In this football game, the Buckeyes will be wearing the red shirts. The UCLA Bruins will kick off. They'll be wearing the home blue colors. Leonard Willis has been doing most of the kickoff returning for Ohio State. He's run four back for a total of 84 yards. That's the UCLA Bruins now breaking out. Ohio State coming west with 48 players under their traveling squad limit. Ohio State operates from an eye formation. I asked Woody Hayes, uh, why the eye? He said, you'd have to be a fool, coaching Arthur Griffin, not to enable him to run any place along the entire front, right or left, and also up inside. Now, going deep, you'll see 89. That is Willis. He's a man in the middle, and he's the man they like to have the ball coming back with it. It'll be Bashnagel back there with him, along with Archie Griffin. It's unusual to see a, a starter like Archie Griffin as one of the deep men, but that's where he is right now. Willis is the man they like to have it. And Brett White of UCLA will kick it off. This is the third meeting ever between these two teams, and here we go. It goes to Willis. He's got it at the eight-yard line. Coming to the sidelines, he almost broke it. He almost popped out of there. Number Looked like 22, 23. Got him. He brought him back to the... For a total of 28 yards, out to about the 36-yard line. Now they're going to put it down at the 35-yard line. And here's a look at the Ohio State offensive line. Danelli, Kane, and Ward across the top. Lukens, Applegate is the man who snapped the ball at center. And Smith, number 60, is a starting guard. It is Pete Johnson at fullback, number 33. Archer Griffin, 45. Bash Nagel is 48. Cornelius Green, number 7, is the quarterback. And they give it to Archie Griffin. He runs it right up the middle. He goes from the 35 out to the 40 for five yards, where he's brought down by Raymond Bell, a linebacker for the UCLA Bruins. Along the front defensively for UCLA, it's Pele 59, 76 is Frazier, 68 is Tenekite. Tautolo, number 56, and Bell, 86, will go in and out of the line. Outside linebackers are Burks, 87, and Curry, 83. Second play of the ball game, and it's Griffin again. Hit behind the line of scrimmage by number 86, Raymond Bell, but Bell couldn't hold him. He spins away and gets short yardage out of the play. Archie Griffin, not the biggest guy in town, but he's strong. 
His legs, Keith, are as strong as any runner I've ever seen. 5'9", 182, but uh, it takes more than one man, unless you've got a perfect angle, to ever stop him without him rolling forward for another yard or two. On third down and two, they bring in the big tight end, Jimmy Moore, 6'5", 255, freshman out of Tempe, Arizona. They figure to punch it in with a double tight end alignment. It's a full house backfield, straight T. And Pete Johnson gets it, hit at the line, and Bennett does not make it. The UCLA Bruins leading Johnson all the way. One ball over him, and they hold the Ohio State Buckeyes on their first offensive possession. Well, watching down on the field, though, Bud, uh, looking at the referee and looking for a penalty flag, and they're going to bring the chain on to take a look at it. But from here, it looks about a foot short. Excuse me. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that uh, we talked uh, right before the game about the gamble that... Uh, UCLA would have to take defensively, and they did take the big gamble on that uh, third down and short yardage. They were in a seven-man line with three linebackers and only one man back. They almost more than a normal goal line defense. Well, Pete Johnson has carried the ball most of the time in the first three games for Ohio State once they've gone inside the 20-yard line, and they're going to go for it on fourth down and about 10 inches to go. They're going to go for it gambling. Ohio State, Woody Hayes showing you the other side. Right here, he is not conservative all the time. You think it's Johnson. It could be Griffin. It's Johnson. He's got the first down as he moves it out to about the 46-yard line. Every short yardage situation, you'll see Ohio State in this straight T formation. Woody likes it because of the extra back that can block back there for them, and they can go any place with any man. There are the three big guys up front in the down positions, Tenny Kite, Frazier, and Pele. They have four linebackers. They move them in and out of the lines, as you see. Curry, Tautolo, Bell, and Burks. And the defensive secondary. Set for you in a moment. First down, Ohio State. Corny Green on the option play. Third the corner. He got a couple of blocks. He got one from Bash Nagel, and he takes it across midfield. Ohio State has the ball at about the UCLA 48-yard line. Oscar Edwards and Pat Smith combined to make the stop for Ohio State, for UCLA. Harold Hart, number two, Oscar Edwards, 21, Pat Smith, 88, and Barney Person, 29, are the secondary men for the UCLA Bruins. Ohio State with the ball now, second down, four, just short of the UCLA, 48. Willis is way wide to the left, and in the slot is Bashnagel. Archie Griffin has the ball, hit at the line of scrimmage, spins away, goes inside the 45, down to the 42, first down, Buckeyes. New play for this game, just run by Ohio State. Their reverse has always been Bushnagel carrying the ball. They put the play in that you just saw in an effort to get the defense to rotate over with Bushnagel, who took a wide split to the bottom of your screen and let Archie Griffith run the counter back into the sidelines. Bashnagel is number 48. Watch out for him. He's liable to break a big one tonight because his average is well up. And you see the story on Archie Griffith. Quite a remarkable athlete. Won the Heisman as a junior. First down, UCLA 42 for the Bucks. First offensive series of the ball game. It's Griffin again. He runs it in the middle. And he's to the 36-yard line before the Bruin linebacking core with help from Cliff Frazier, the nose guard, can bring him down. 76 and 56, the primary tacklers. Here's a look at Mr. Frazier doing his thing in the middle. 6'5", 254 pounds. A really superior nose guard. I guess we missed the replay, but we'll catch him. Here he is right now. You can see being blocked by Applegate, but then fighting off the block, getting in on the tackle. Second down, four yards to go. Ball is handed off to the big fullback. And Pete Johnson, 238 pounds of him. Pounds down to about the 33-yard line. Not quite the 32. They've got to go to the 32 to get their first down. So it's going to be third down and about a half a yard to go. And that critical first down has been the key for Ohio State thus far. They've averaged over five yards a try on the first three first down plays. And again, you have the double tight ends in there. Moore coming in at the left side. Willis having come out, and here's the handoff. And the fullback this time slants off tackle and gets his first down as he moves it to about the 30-yard line. To stop them, uh, the Bruins have got to shut off the big gain on first down. We've got another opportunity here. The temperature dropping rapidly now as we begin to get a little ocean haze and breeze coming in from the Pacific, cooling down what has been a very hot day and humid here in Los Angeles. On first down, Green gives the ball to Archie Griffith. 
And Griffin is at the 26-yard line before the Bruins get him. He got almost five yards, about four and a half on that carry. The key blocks are a double team of the middle guard Frazier by either of the two guards. They're, everybody's very conscious of Griffith going wide. The tackle's able to block him out, and Johnson just leads through and isolates blocks on the linebacker, letting Griffin break away from his block. Second down, and about five and a half for the first down. Ball just outside the 25-yard line of UCLA. Reed, hands off, fumble! UCLA gets it! Archie Griffin was hit just as he received the ball and coming in to hit him and make the recovery is Cliff Frazier. Raymond Burke wound up with the ball. But it was Frazier all the way who made the play. Frazier takes an angle charge, as you can see, number 76, right in the middle of your screen. You can see him shoot the gap here, breaking a little bit to the left. He rides right through Applegate, and he hits Griffith just as the ball hits Griffith. Tie between Frazier and the ball. UCLA takes over. The live action, Shara turns around, put it up, getting pressure, runs it up the middle. A book had to run for his life, but he had some daylight. It looked almost as if he had an option on the quarterback draw there, but he just stepped inside the pursuer and picked up some yardage. UCLA getting the football, first down at their 27-yard line, and John Shara ran it up to about the 33. There's the UCLA offensive line. Pedersen, 85, Coppins, McKinley, Kahn, Randy Cross, Bob Kazarian, and Jerry Robinson. James Sarpy and Robinson will be alternating. The backfield is led by quarterback John Shara. Gives the ball to Wendell Tyler. And Wendell Tyler, who is a speed burner, pops it up across the 36, close to a first down. Wendell Ayers is number 30. Uh, Eddie Ayers, Wendell Tyler is number 22. Wally Henry is number 8. And Jim Sarpy is number 4. The defensive unit for Ohio State. Curto and Brzezinski are the ends. Beeman and Bonamici are the big top tackles inside. The linebackers are Kuhn and Thompson. Aaron Brown will play a middle guard as well as a middle linebacker at the defensive secondary. Ray Griffin, Tim Fox, Craig Cassidy, and uh, Bruce Rule, number 43. So the chain gang was brought onto the field to see whether or not UCLA had its first down, and they are just short. So it's third down and very short yardage as Wally Henry comes wide to the right now for the Bruins. Ayers and Tyler are set behind Shara. Shara keeps it. Stuffs it up to about the 40-yard line as he got a good offensive surge from the left side of his line, Coppins and McKinley. Ohio State's defense is very interesting. Woody Hayes believes in getting his best athletes to the wide field, and he swings five men to the wide field. The end, the tackle, the linebacker, the halfback, and his safety man that really is a monster man. The other five men go to the short side of the field. Bruins unbalanced, strong left this time. Mandy Cross moving to the other side of center. The ball is given to Ayer, number 30. And he moves it out from the 40-yard line to about the 43-yard line. The tackle was made by Brzezinski, Bob Brzezinski, 84, and Ed Thompson, number nine for Ohio State. The football knows of it touching the 44-yard line. It's second down and six for UCLA. The Buckeyes fumble on a hard hit by Cliff Frazier. The Bruins taking over. Now they're starting to move it. And it's there. First down, UCLA at the Ohio State 21-yard line. 35 yards on the gallop by Eddie Ayer. It was Bruce Rule who finally pulled him down. <laughs> Beautiful little counter take that time by Shara that set it up for him, and uh, Ayers really turned it on. He hasn't been the big threat thus far in the UCLA attack. Tyler has been the, the big runner, averaging 7.3 yards a try. That counter fake drew the Buckeyes in the wrong direction and opened it up. Ruins in business, first down, near the 21-yard line of Ohio State. Jara comes down the line, gives to Ayers again, and Eddie getting tremendous hitting on the right side of the line. Splits the defensive end and defensive tackle and punches eight more yards out for the Bruins. UCLA has a huge offensive line, and they take the largest splits of any team that I've seen playing college football in a long time. That gives you a lot of room to run between the people. Ken take a look at the man who made the stop. Kuhn, the linebacker for Ohio State, moving to the inside. He's blocked hard there. 
that slides off the block to make the tackle. It's second down and two yards to go now for UCLA. The football at near the Ohio State 13-yard line. Jara back to throw. Throws it. Sharpie got it. Touchdown. And so the UCLA Bruins break on top. And it grows quiet along the banks of the Olin Tangy. Really impressive drive. It looks like some football team. Well, they started on their 27, and in seven plays, they took it in using only a minute and seven seconds and get on the board. Six minutes and ten seconds to play in the first quarter. Brett White will try for the extra point out of the hold of Jeff Dankworth. We anticipated that UCLA would move the ball against Ohio State. The question was, could they stop them defensively? The kick is in the air, and it's drilled. And so there you have it. With six minutes and ten seconds to play in the first quarter at the Los Angeles Coliseum, the UCLA Bruins take a 7 nothing lead over the Ohio State Buckeyes. Metropolitan life takes you back to a time when you were very young and the future was far away. Wendy, Tommy's here. Come on down, son. Thank you, sir. Do I look sophisticated enough? <laughs> yes, honey, yes. You look sophisticated enough. Oh, I'm so Come on. nervous. Is Wendy ready? It's for you. Remember the rented tux and the corsages that ended up pressed between the pages of a diary? Somehow years have passed since then. And if this seems like only yesterday, imagine how soon tomorrow will be here. At Metropolitan Life, we help you get ready for the future before it arrives. With insurance for your kids' education, for your own retirement, for your future. See your Metropolitan representative. Because if this seems like only yesterday, can the future be far away? Metropolitan, where the future is now. For Ohio State, wearing the red, trailing 7 0. It's Archie Griffin and Brian Bashnagel up front. Lenny Willis, number 89, the deep man, as you see, the Los Angeles Coliseum now. A lot of folks in it as the UCLA Bruins kick it off. White doesn't get all of it, it's bobbling around, and it's finally Griffin back at the nine yard line, and that's it. They ride him all the way back to the goal line, but they're going to put him down at the eight-yard line. Johnny Lynn, number 23, a defensive back from the first guy to get to Archie. Let's have another look at that touchdown play to put the Bruins on top early. Great throw by Shara. First and goal to go, or first and the 11-yard line. He simply drops back, hits Sharpie on the inside pattern. He's got good inside position and falls into the end zone, and that's the second touchdown given up by Ohio State this year. It's also UCLA's first touchdown pass of the year. Ohio State's got to start bad field position. They're on eight-yard line, trailing by seven. Johnson and Griffin set by behind the line and headed away to Pete Johnson. And you can see, I think, a measure of the power of that big youngster right there as he was pretty well met at the line of scrimmage, but with his momentum and the strength of his offensive line, they just wedged it out for about three and a half yards. He's one of those people that doesn't give you anything to look at as we take a look at Coach Woody Hayes in his 25th season at Ohio State. Johnson is just all shoulders as he bends forward, and you see his shoulders and his legs, and there's just nothing to get a good grip on the tackle. He averaged almost five and a half yards to carry. It's second down. Let's call it a long six yards to go for the Bucks. They give it to Archie Griffin. Griffin getting good blocking. Breaks into the secondary. It is finally run down by Raymond Burks, number 87 of UCLA. 15 yards on the gain, and it was Bill Lukens, number 64, who the guard who pulled out and led him around. That's the play that we mentioned uh, in the previous possession of Ohio State. Uh, Woody Hayes said he got all of those principles from Red Plate of West Point back in 1947. So I guess football doesn't change too much. Now the Bucks have pretty good field position as they get it up first down at the 27-yard line on Griffin's run of 15 yards. Griffin again. Archie slips into the crowd and keeps churning and gets a yard after he disappeared from view. Tim Tinnikite, 68. Terry Tartola, 56. Raymond Burks, 87. The stop. And you keep wondering, when is Ohio State going to put the ball in the air? Cornelius Green is a very good passer. He's hit 57% of his passes. They like to grind it out and then catch you when you're just a little bit relaxed, think and run, and hit you with a long one. It's second down. Six yards to go. Ohio State yet to put the ball in the air. Cornelius Green on the option. 
He is caught at about the 35, slips away, takes it to the 40, goes to the 41-yard line before they can lasso him. Oscar Edwards, number 21, brought him down. So that'll be another first down for the Ohio State Buckeyes at their own 41-yard line. They started this offensive possession back on their eighth, and they trail in the ball game by a score of 7-0 as the Bruins in their first defensive possession with 73 yards and seven plays to take the lead 7-0. Bashnagel in the slot. Willis is wide to the right. Now it's Brian in motion. Brian Bashnagel. And here's Cornelius Green coming around. Turns it inside. Beautiful run by Cornelius Green. And it's a foot race to the flag now as Burks is after him. And Raymond gets him. They were in good position. That was just brilliant running by Cornelius Green. 47 yards on the run by Cornelius Green. Green was badly shaken up against Michigan State. Uh, Woody Hayes said that he really uh, didn't recover totally from that injury until this week in practice. Linebackers of UCLA against Tennessee overran the play some. They do it right here, in particular, Bell. Now watch Bell. He takes himself right out of it. Green cut right by him and was long gone. Raymond Burks, who started his football career at UCLA as a tight end, was the linebacker that ran him down. It's first down. The football is inside the 12-yard line. They give it to Pete Johnson, the fullback, and he's down to the seven-yard line for five yards. Curry and Bell make the stop. And you can see Ohio State in their T formation that time. Anytime they're inside the 20, you know it's going to be the T. They call it the robust T meaning that it is so strong, nobody can stop it. Well, Pete Johnson has scored nine touchdowns so far, so it's obvious he's done most of the ball carrying, and he's already picked up more yards this year than he did the whole season last year. All right, Cornelius Green sets him on second down and five. And the handoff this time goes to Brian Bastnagel, the right halfback, out of the full house tee, and he runs into Raymond Bell. And this time, Raymond did not miss his opportunity. He stuck it to Bastnagel pretty well. Rather an unusual play for Ohio State to run. Usually they follow all of the power. That was just a quick counter without anybody blocking their head. And UCLA shooting all the gaps was ready for it. They've got to go just inside the two to get the first down. The football is just outside the five. So let's call it third down and a short four. UCLA with a six-man front. Give it a ball to Pete Johnson. Johnson goes for the first down, and he's going to be very close to it. I think he's got it. He's very close to it. If he's got it, it'll be first and goal to go, just inside the two, and I believe they'll bring the chains on. So while they bring the chains in, gives me a chance to identify the officiating group tonight. The referee is Charlie Moffitt. Tom Manning is the umpire. Sid Seaman, the headlinesman. Gil Marchman, the line judge. The back judge is Donnie Wilson. The field judge is Otto Foles. We've got 1 minute and 58 seconds to play in the first quarter. The chain stretches out. First down, Ohio State. First and goal to go. You know, the Big Ten Conference, the country's oldest and most prestigious conference, has been a national leader in its administration of athletics and high level of academic achievement and it's since its founding in 1896. And they're drawing record crowds this year for their football, primarily because of teams like the one you're watching now, Ohio State. Cornelius Green turns. He gives it to Johnson. He fumbles the ball. Ohio State recovers it. Ted Smith, the left guard, number 60, was turned around on the play and saw the ball pop loose. That's something you very rarely see happen to an Ohio State team, particularly this close to the goal line. Green pivots, gives the ball to Johnson, and Johnson is hit again before he has good possession of the ball. It bounces out to the right, and we get a great recovery here by Smith, who alertly is on the ball for Ohio State, and Woody's the surprise of everybody else. Oh, he's concerned. Second down, goal to go from the one-yard line. Cornelius Green still got it. Running for the flag. Has blocking. Cut down. Brian Bashney go through the big block to get the Ohio State quarterback into the end zone. And so the Buckeyes, stung by the UCLA touchdown, retaliate with a 92-yard march and will try to make it even. Tom Cleban. The senior out of Cincinnati, who was such a dramatic figure in the 12-10 victory over Michigan a year ago. Soccer style, straight through. And so at 54 seconds to go in the first quarter of play in the Los Angeles Coliseum, we're even. Ohio State 7 and UCLA 7. And we have penalty flags thrown on the preceding play. Well, we will get a penalty. I would. 
on the kickoff. Yes, it's against UCLA. Offsides or some infraction. He had the indication from Charlie Muffet that Ohio State refuses, and they'll take the extra point. And we have a 7-7 ball game. The balance of the Ohio State offense is what makes it so tough. Johnson hitting inside, Griffin going outside, and when you look at those two men, you open it up so much to green. Hydroplaning can occur when you drive in the rain. Water can build up under your tires, and the tread can actually lose contact with the road. That's hydroplaning. Goodyear developed the Polysteel Radial Tire to help prevent hydroplaning. The Polysteel Radial has eight wide grooves to help channel away water from under your tires. Eight wide grooves specially designed to help improve traction on wet roads. The Polysteel Radial with double steel belts for protection. And a high traction rubber that really grips on roads wet or dry. Drive on the tire that keeps its feet, even in the rain. The Polysteel Radio, only from Goodyear. Ten plays, 92 yards, five minutes and 16 seconds, and the Buckeyes are on the board. And Flavin is going to be kicking off from the UCLA 45-yard line. Or Spladani will kick off, excuse me, the putter. And deep will be Wally Henry and Eddie Ayers. And here's a look at the touchdown. See Green swinging wide. Pushnagel coming in, threatening the outside block and opening it up inside for Green to score. Cornelius Green, he's a dandy, especially if you get too uh, preoccupied with Johnson and Griffith. All right, Spladani will kick it off. From the Bruin 45 with a 15-yard penalty. Onside kick, ball loose, Ohio State got it. Lightning strikes for the Buckeyes as they go for the onside kick and the Bruins are asleep. I think they were asleep as they just failed to handle it, but uh, they didn't have the ball handling people in there, just the kickoff team people that normally receive it, and it is Ohio State first down. Flavin normally kicks off when Skaldani came in there. I think people should have thought uh, something's up, something's up. Skaldani recovered the ball. It hit the leg of one of the up linemen for UCLA and bounced right back into the hands of Skladani. And now Ohio State has the ball just inside the UCLA 35-yard line. So Woody Hayes comes west, stays in Los Angeles at a big fancy hotel, comes out of the ballpark and has shown us all kinds of fancy things here in the early going. Cornelius Green sets Bastagel in motion. Keeps it. He's down to the 31-yard line before Raymond Burks comes up and leads the tacklers for UCLA. 35 seconds of the clock running. It's been one of the fastest quarters, I think, of the entire season so far. It's just disappeared. We haven't had any incomplete passes, so the only time that the clock has been stopped is after a first down while they've moved the chains, and it really does run when the clock is never killed for an incomplete pass. Well, it's second down and a long six yards to go from the UCLA 31. The Bruin defense got to really turn on some pressure here as the Buckeyes strike it again, and Green has the ball. Almost gets around the corner. It was Dale Curry, number 83, that tripped him up and he fell forward. Didn't miss his first down by much. He's going to have about a yard and a half, maybe two. As we run out of time in the first quarter of play, and after one, we're even at seven and seven. America, Chevette is here. A new kind of American car by Chevrolet. It's about time, it's about time, it's about time for a new kind of American car. It's about time. International in design and heritage, Chevette incorporates engineering concepts proved around the world. It's a four-passenger American car with a wheelbase about the same as a VW Rabbit's and it's corrosion-protected 17 ways. It's about time. Chevette is a new kind of American car. 
Chevette's standard 1.4 liter engine is rated at 40 miles per gallon highway, 28 city, our highest mileage ratings. Consider the driving range that could give you with its 13 gallon fuel tank. Chevette's turning circle is one of the shortest in the world. It gives you more front seat headroom than a Datsun B210 two-door sedan, more front seat legroom than a Toyota Corolla two-door sedan, and it can carry cargo up to four feet wide. It's about time for a new kind of car, and we got it here for you. Prices for the new Chevette start at $28.99 for our special two-seat version, the Chevette Scooter. Two bucket seats, a roomy rear deck, and a sticker price of just $28.99. Looking on to the Los Angeles Coliseum from the Goodyear Blimp Columbia. This is where the 1932 Olympic Games were held in this complex. And now we look to the Ohio State Buckeyes with the football. Third down and three yards to go at the UCLA 27-yard line. Cornelius Green gives to Pete Johnson. Johnson breaks it big over the right side. Goes inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. He gains yards. And Frazier again broke through, but uh, that time he got Green instead of the ball carrier. So watch Frazier again on the replay. You can tell how quick this man is, he, even though he weighs 254 pounds. Look at that takeoff. He penetrates, and he brings Green down, but Green is able to get the ball far enough out for Johnson to get a clean handoff. And it's first down, 10 yards to go for Ohio State at the UCLA 17-yard line. The Buckeyes drove 92 yards to even the score at 7-7, seven and seven, and then tried an onside kick, and it worked. And now time is called by Ohio State. It's a very warm, humid day in Los Angeles. Our score is 7-7. We've got a timeout on the field. Hey, Zach, I need a break. Give me a good sideline shot. Do what I can, man. When you're shooting football, you know what's coming. Action. And like anything else, doing it right takes a special quality. Call it pride. I'm sorry about your arm, man. The Budweiser people have that kind of pride, too. When you say Budweiser, you said it all. Hey, Goldilocks. Here come colors you could never get before in 60 seconds. The camera is Polaroid Super Shooter. The film, our new Super Color. You never got reds this red or this much yellow before. Hey, Goldilocks. Only $25. The super colors are here from Polaroid. There are the first quarter numbers. The important one, of course, is the bottom one, the time of possession. Ohio State's offense tremendous, and they have the ball 11 minutes and 50 seconds against 310 for UCLA in the first quarter. And on first down, from the 17, Cornelius Green, the Ohio State quarterback having a big night, turns inside the, ins the outside linebacker, and he's down to about the six-yard line for a first down. It'll be first and goal to go. Let's call it the seven-yard line. The ball is closer there. UCLA is gambling some with its defensive alignment here. They have five linebackers in there. Manu Tuiasosopo, Terry Tautolo, Dale Curry, Raymond Bell, and Raymond Burks. Five linebackers in their defensive alignment. Now they send six men up along the front, seven men up along the front. Here's the handoff to Pete Johnson, and he punches down to the three for four yards. Watch that Ohio State line takeoff. You can tell why this is a great football team. They simply knock them back two or three yards on every single play. I know that the game plan that uh, Dick Vermeil hoped would unfold has not here with his offensive team only having been on the field three minutes and ten seconds. Second down. Goal to go. Touchdown! Pete Johnson. He took it in behind Chris Ward and Jimmy Moore. So Johnson now has scored 60 points on the season. Ten touchdowns. 
It's a 34-yard six-play drive for Ohio State. Clavin in now. Out of match, Nagel's hold. Fires it through the upright. 13 minutes and 27 seconds to play in the first half. And the Ohio State Buckeyes have broken out on top, 14-7. to Here's Bill Fleming. All right, thank you, Keith. This was a big day in college football, as you know. In the top ten is ranked by the UPI. Two teams fell today. Let's take a look at what happened. First of all, Ohio State, as you know now, 14-7 to over UCLA. Oklahoma had a real battle on its hands to defeat Colorado 21 to 20. Third ranked USC, another tough game, 27 to 10 over Iowa. Nebraska over Miami of Florida, 31 to 16. And Michigan defeated Missouri 31 to 7. Texas is leading Utah State. Texas A&M defeated Kansas State 10 to nothing. Notre Dame lost to Michigan State. What a game that'll be next week in East Lansing. Michigan to Michigan State. Alabama overwhelmed Mississippi. And it was Penn State, a hard-fought win, 10 to 3 over Kentucky. We'll keep you up to date on the games tonight. But right now, let's go back to Keith. All right, Bill, and the first kickoff, knuckleballed out of bounds. And it'll back Ohio State up five yards, and uh, Skladeni will re-kick it. Every coach hopes for consistency in their play. Ohio State has had the ball three possessions. They fumbled it one time as they were on their way to a touchdown, it appeared, and they scored touchdowns on the other two possessions. That's as sound and consistent as it's possible for a team to be. The deep men for UCLA on the kickoff are Wally Henry and Eddie Ayers. There they are. Henry averaging 24 yards per return. Five of them, and Ayers has returned one time for 20 yards. Henry is eight, and air number 30. So now Spladani will kick off from the 35-yard line, and this time I don't think he'll catch the Bruins snapping. This time I think he wants all of it. He takes a long run to the ball. Gets it high. It's Henry at the seven. Little guy can move it. Twist inside the 20 to the 24-yard line, maybe the 25. Nope, call it the 24, where the Bruins have it first down, and... UCLA's offensive unit coming onto the field is going to be ice cold. That's what I was going to say. They hope they stayed warmed up over there because it's been a long while since they've been in the game. The only time they saw the ball, they took it in for a touchdown, 73 yards and seven plays. That was a long time ago. Woody Hayes, ball club, and the football. All right, John Shara. That's the Bruin. He hands the ball off. Ayers popping straight ahead from his halfback position. Didn't get much. Maybe two yards. Here are some other scores out of the Ivy League. The Bulldogs, the Eli winning today, 24 to 10. Princeton running past Columbia. And Dartmouth defeating Holy Cross. Boston U edging Harvard. Second down, eight yards to go for the UCLA Bruins from their 26-yard line. Shara still got it. Keeps it. He took a pretty good wallop from number 23, Craig Cassidy. Craig Cassidy. There's a name. That's right. He's the son of Hopalong Cassidy, the Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State. Navy bouncing back. The Air Cassidy. Force. Cassidy having a great uh, year thus far. Three interceptions so far in the season to lead Ohio State in that department. UCLA facing a third down three now from the 31-yard line. Tough season for Sig Auburn. Sig George and Auburn may have yet to win. On third and three. Well, he gave the ball to Tyler. And he ran into Nick Bonamici, number 75, a big junior from Brentwood, New York. And I don't think he made it. He's just not going to run over Bonamici. And we're going to be looking at the first punt in the ball game. UCLA will have to do it. Trevor Rogers from Georgia Tech getting one today. And Mississippi State, North Carolina State bouncing back against Indiana after taking a drubbing up at East Lansing last week. And there's the upset. Michigan State leading Notre Dame. All right, here's the kick by John Sullivan. No return on it as Tim Fox, defensive back, who returns the punch. Number 12 is just snowed under on a 33-yard punt by Sullivan. 10.57 to go in the first half, and it's 14-7 Ohio State leads. Hey, Mercury Morris, what do you think you're doing? I'm trying out a new move, coach. 
Remember Joe in that New York Life commercial? Joe and his family needed a lot of life insurance protection. And that New York Life team really got it for him. They protected his family and showed him the way to retire in comfort. Hey, if I had protection like that, man, I might make 3,000 yards. Where the name of the game is life, there's New York Life. In scientific tests conducted for STP by a major independent research firm, 14 cars of various makes and mileage were each driven 24,000 miles and tested for oil consumption before and after adding STP oil treatment to a premium 30-weight motor oil. STP oil treatment, on average, reduced oil consumption by 16%. STP, STP. It helps your oil do a better job. Ohio State will have the football first down just short of their 35-yard line. As you look down into the Los Angeles Coliseum, Applegate snapping the ball to Cornelius Green with Johnson and Griffin and Bashnagel in the backfield. Bashnagel set in the slot. Green gives the ball to Archie Griffin. Archie Griffin having a big night, takes it out to the 48-yard line. He gained 13 yards on the play, and I believe that's about the fourth time that he's been in the double figures so far in the ball game. The UCLA defense uh, has not been as strong as their offense at any time this year. In their previous games, their offense has gained only 100 yards more than the teams that they have played against. And, of course, they haven't played against an offensive team nearly as good as Ohio State that we're looking at right now. Griffin's carried eight times for 57 yards. He's got it again. Oh, look at that blocking on the left side of that line. He gets it down to the UCLA 45-yard line. It was Chris Ward. And the pulling guard, Smith. Ward Smith really opened the door for him. He gained eight on that carry. When they're moving the ball on you like this, uh, you're coaching a defensive team. You think, oh, I wish we'd get a 15-yard penalty or we'd get a fumble. I don't think you get an interception because I doubt if Ohio State's going to throw. The move inside, 10 minutes to go now in the first half. Ohio State leading 14-7. to seven. They've absolutely dominated the game so far. Outside of the one possession in which UCLA threw it 73 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. In the backfield, Archie Griffin is really nailed by number 56, Terry Tautolo. Beautiful defensive play. He guessed right, shot the gap. That's the first time Ohio State's been stopped for a loss. Ball goes back to the 48-yard line. And it'll bring up third down and six for the Buckeyes. Bucks are yet to put the ball in the air. Green's at 16 out of 28 so far in the season. Got Bashnagel in motion. Going to throw this time. He throws. It's good. The pass is caught by Larry Kane, the tight end. So he had the wide man, Willis. He sent Bashnagel in motion, and he threw to the tight end, Kane, for 22 yards and a first down at the UCLA 26-yard line. Pretty good defensive play that time by UCLA. They had a good rush. They had relatively excellent coverage, but the pass was so well thrown by Green that uh, the defenders had no chance to get in front of the ball. And so the Buckeyes keep on beating the bushes. Marching down the field. Bashnagel again goes in motion. Green gives to Johnson. Johnson hit by number 86, Bell, behind the line. Couldn't hold him. Might have fumbled. He did. Bruins arguing. Don't get it. Ohio State keeps it. That Johnson is some kind of strong because Bell hit him with an excellent tackle. Let's take a look at it again. Bell is 215-pounder. Here's 86. number 86. Uh, you can see him breaking off. He's got good balance right there, and he drove in very well, hit solidly with his shoulder, and Johnson's just got so much leg drive, he went right through him. Second down and six, the ball at the UCLA 22-yard line. Green still got it, runs it into the middle, and he paid a little price for it. Number 87, Raymond Burks, the man that anchored him down. But number 56, Tau Tolo, gave him a pretty good wallop, too. The football is just inside the 20, call it the 19-yard line. And it's third down. They've got to go to the 16. So it's third down three for Ohio State. 
And the old robust T coming up. Two tight ends in the lineup. Green still got it. And goes to the 15 for a first down Ohio State. A lot of daylight when you have to play Johnson and then you're hanging out there wide waiting for the pitch to Griffin. Green has been the leading ball carrier. He's had plenty of room to run. Let's watch Bell again, the linebacker, coming across. He keeps his balance. And he's in on the tackle. Of excellent pursuit by Bell and good power in the tackle as he drove Green back. Green's gained 89 yards and 10 carries. First down, Ohio State, UCLA, 15-yard line. Give it to Archie Griffin up the middle. He goes, and he's down to the five inside the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go, Ohio State. And they had a good trap that time on Cliff Frazier. He had angled to the bottom of your screen. Griffin turned up inside of him. And the two guys that did it, Rick Applegate, the center, 61, and Ron Ayers, number 59, the right guard. They just absolutely took him out of the play. Ohio State leading 14 to 7, trying to get another one here. First down and goal from the five. It's Pete Johnson. Drive, drive. They get him at the one yard line. Raymond Burks. Harold Harton. And number 63 in there defensively for UCLA, Brad Besser, a freshman. The football now is at the two yard line. Second down and goal to go for Ohio State. Well, let's see now whether or not it's Archie Griffin's turn to get on the scoreboard for 1975. Johnson scored 10. Griffin just to uh, count one. Johnson! Touchdown! Pete's got 11 for the year. And so the Ohio State partisans scoop it up at the Los Angeles Coliseum and watch the offensive line serve. Boy, they really come off that ball. Great blocking by the backs also. Bushnagel knocking his man out. And Johnson has got that excellent power that enables him to move it forward after he's hit for a yard or two. And that's what gave them the touchdown. Bushnagel holds and Clavin kicks. On the money. Five minutes exactly to play in the first half. And now our scoreboard reads Ohio State 21, UCLA 7. After Home Light developed a chainsaw for $109.95, we tried to ruin it by doing things you shouldn't do. Because as America's largest maker of professional chainsaws, Home Light has a reputation to protect. And we're not about to let a saw out that can't stand up. So while the Home Light XL may be inexpensive, it's not cheap. Home Light for the pro and the man who wants to cut like one. And now the $109.95 Home Light is just $99.99. Making Western movies is thirsty work. That's why I'm glad I found light beer for Miller. It tastes great. But what I really like is it's less filling. And light actually has one-third less calories than their regular beer. I can't afford to get filled up. You got these characters chasing you all over the desert. You've got to move fast. Okay, one more time. Only the bad guys. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Do you have a pencil and paper handy? Jot down U.S. Olympic Committee, Box W, Cathedral Station, Boston, Mass., 02118. If you send $5 to this address, you'll receive one of the new 1976 Olympic Winter Games cloth emblems for your jacket or cap. And you'll be helping the U.S. team to be at the Winter Games in Austria this coming February. Once again, to secure the patch, mail $5, U.S. Olympic Committee, Box W, Cathedral Station, Boston, Massachusetts, 02118. Your contribution is tax deductible. The patch is the committee's way of saying thank you to each contributor. Be sure to watch ABC's exclusive coverage from Innsbruck beginning on Tuesday, February 3rd. Tom Squidini will kick it off for Ohio State. He'll kick to Wally Henry and Eddie Ayers. Ohio State leading 21 to 7. He kicks it deep. Henry two yards deep in the end zone's coming out. Mistake, 16-yard line. Feet taken from under him by Sladeny, the kicker. 18-yard return. 
Amazing statistic. Ohio State has had the ball 19 minutes and 20 seconds. UCLA, who hoped to keep possession themselves, only 5 minutes and 40 seconds, as we have just under 5 minutes left to play in the first half. All right, Bruins, first down at their 16-yard line. They were impressive in their first defensive possession, but since that time, I'll tell you, the whole thing has belonged to the Buckeyes. Tyler, 22, goes to the 20-yard line for four yards on his carry. And you can see now that dark is set in around the Coliseum. This Monday, the Dallas Cowboys travel to the brand-new Pontiac Met Stadium to meet the Detroit Lions on ABC's Monday Night Football. Roger Staubach and Greg Landry. A couple of great quarterbacks in NFL Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. John Shara moving down the line, gives it to Jim Brown, number 33, a 207-pound junior. And he's taken up over the top for short yardage. So UCLA now is going to be looking at third down at about three yards to go. The football sitting out around the 23-yard line. And UCLA be very patient about their game plan. Uh, being two touchdowns behind, you'd expect them to go to the air, try to run wide, a little razzle-dazzle, but they're going to be content to try to move the ball with consistency. took it away from him, but he gets to the 30-yard line for eight yards, and it's a UCLA first down. Wendell was hit hard on the arm. The ball popped up for a moment, but he reached across and covered it. Ray Griffin and Ken Kuhn, the tackle for Ohio State. Let's watch the block on Kuhn, the senior linebacker of Ohio State, number 54 in the middle of your screen, moving in, and he's really bounced out of there. A very nice block, I believe. That's Martinez, number 75, putting the block on him. Cara goes to the air for the second time, and he misses Wally Henry. Henry was in the seam, all right. Ed Thompson, a linebacker, number nine, had dropped off to fill that zone. And Cara missed his man. Just a little bit of an overthrow, or it would have been a big game, UCLA, as we look at the sun setting over the Pacific. All right, it's second down and ten for the Bruins now. Just outside the 30-yard line. Henry wide to the right side of the field. And Cara in trouble. Down he goes as Ohio State was blitzing all the way with Aaron Brown, the middle guard, and Eddie Beeman coming. And they got him. And there's Woody having a look and enjoying it. Aaron Brown is a sophomore middle guard, number 55, who just lines up right on the center, moves to the outside. There was a little bit of a counter fake to the right side of your screen. Shira tried to come back to the left of the screen, and all he saw was Mr. Brown. No chance. Loss is all the way back to the 23-yard line. Loss of about eight yards on the play. Now it's third down and a half mile. Bruins have got to go outside the 40. They've got 17, almost 18 yards for the first down. Charles Fake plays his one linebacker, gets his pass off. Rick Walker had it in his hands, and he is thrown down, and it... No call on it. I thought you might get a flag on that one because one of the Bucks came in and pinned his arms, but not before the ball had reached his own area or the peripheral area of the intended receiver. And at that particular point in time, contact is allowed as they went for the ball, and UCLA will have to kick it away. You really forget skill when it's an incomplete pass. Shira was really pressured that time. Uh, Thompson, the linebacker, rushed. He stood in there, threw a perfect strike. All right, Sullivan to punt. No pressure. Bash Nagel and Fox deep. Beautiful kick. It's Fox from the 30. Comes back to the 39. And there he is dropped. 47 yards, 9-yard return. 2.09 to play first half. Ohio State gets the ball back. They lead UCLA 21-7. to
tonight. I'm sure everybody inside this big old Coliseum and many of you watching wondering whether or not UCLA this time can slow down the Buckeyes. As Cornelius Green takes to Johnson, keeps it this time to throw it for two. They get him at the 41-yard line. Cliff Frazier, number 76, pulled out of that middle guard position and followed all the way across the field to get him. And here's Jim Lampley. If the Buckeyes get close to the goal line again, it'll be interesting to underscore one thing that Keith and Bud have been talking about all night. Woody Hayes' offense may not be getting less conservative. It may be getting even more conservative. Pete Johnson's carried the ball more than 70% of the time inside the 20-yard line this year because Hayes feels that running the tailback inside the 20 is an open invitation to injury. Keith? Well, you see the annex of Cornelius Green again as he goes for 13 yards and an Ohio State first down at about the UCLA 46-yard line. That's the kind of thing that drives you up the wall. You defense the normal attack very, very well, and Green takes a broken play and with his own offensive skill runs it for a first down. Green now with 104 yards and 12 carries in the ball game. Back sets the throw. Gets it off. Has a man, Archie Griffin. And he's got him on the letters at the UCLA 24-yard line. Another Ohio State first down. Actually, Corny didn't throw that ball too well. He sort of pumped up a balloon, but Archie Griffin was so wide open, didn't matter. He gained 22 yards on the play. Kind of make you think Ohio State's relatively versatile. They were able to run the ball when they want to, and now with time running out, they appear to be able to throw it well. Coming up at halftime, tonight's Fireman Fun Flashback, you'll see the Heisman Trophy Award winners from both schools, Ohio State's Les Forbath, Vic Janowitz, Hoppy Cassidy, and UCLA's Gary Beeman. Take you back some exciting times when those fellas walked around the football fields. First down, Ohio State, UCLA 24. Fashnagel in motion. Griffin's got it. No, oh, Green kept it. Almost in slow motion, that play developed. As Cornelius Green threw it to Lenny Willis, the split in number 89. Ohio State uh, has two timeouts remaining, and uh, we're getting an official's timeout here for a measurement. As the game was just inside the 15, if they are anywhere near that 14-yard line, looks to me like they are, they will have another first down. We have 48 seconds to play in the first half. 48 seconds. Got it. Close. So close counts other places than in a horseshoe fit, I reckon. About the only time that the defense hopes that they do make it is when they're down there inside the 15 or inside the 10. That gives them one less down with which to score. Now UCLA spends a timeout. The Bruins will have two remaining. Ohio State with two remaining. 48 seconds to play in the first half. And the Buckeyes 21-7 lead and threatening again. The Ohio State University is big. In fact, it has the largest enrollment of any single campus in America. But to Lenny Creek, Ohio State size means he can earn a Ph.D. in geodetic science. There's no other school in the country where he can. Ohio State size means the students have a choice of more than 250 fields of study and can select for more than 8,000 courses. For instance, they can study pollution in Lake Erie or the formation of glaciers in Antarctica, just to name a few. But the size of a mega university can be confusing to a newcomer like Angela Morris. And that's why Ohio State freshmen enrolled in the university college where nearly 200 counselors help each new student. And there's more than just formal education at Ohio State. Barb Bohannon is studying in the university's pantomime company. And that's just one of 350 organizations which students can join. Ohio State University can be proud of its size, not because it makes them the biggest, but because it makes them one of the best. It's first down. Ohio State at the UCLA 14-yard line. Bashnagel in motion. Bruins put seven men up on the front. Give it a grip, and he's run down from behind. And it's Cliff Frazier. Number 76, the nose guard, that fought his way through the traffic to get him. Got some help from Pete Paley, but the play belonged to Frazier. And Ohio State will spend another time out to stop the clock and 35 seconds to play in the first half. Frazier's an unusual young man, 6'5", 254. He's a great musician. He plays the piano, the organ, the guitar, and the drums, and is a theater arts major, but he's some football player. Here's Bill Fleming. Well, you know, this is the fifth weekend of college football here on ABC, and so far, 
We have had $20,000 contributed by the Chevrolet Motor Division to the scholarship funds of the various institutions for the outstanding offensive and defensive players. So here's a quick look at those young men who have distinguished themselves so far in our televised games. First of all, on offense, Tony Galbraith of Missouri, Glenn Caprioli of Boston College, Shar of UCLA, Stager of Illinois, Blank, Copeland, Jackson, Bean, Collins, and McLean, and then these are the defensive winners. Now, after tonight's game, of course, we will be naming the outstanding offensive and defensive players. Our ABC commentators will be voting, and to those schools will go $1,000 scholarships to the offensive and defensive players and to the general scholarship fund from Chevrolet. Okay, Keith. All right, Bill, the Buckeyes are backed up near the 18-yard line now. Call it second down and 14 with 35 seconds to play in the first half in Ohio State with one timeout remaining. Cornelius Green back to throw. Delivers it. It is almost pulled out by Fashnagel. What a tremendous effort. Fashnagel is so wide open here, it's just unreal, but the pass was just slightly overthrown. There he goes, number 48, breaking for the sidelines. Appears to be man-to-man -man coverage, and he simply outruns the defender. Is wide, wide open, but Green gets the ball just beyond his fingertips. Bashnagel cannot hold it. An academic All-American. Maybe a Rhodes Scholar. All right, third down, 14. Cornelius Green back to throw again. He's looking for Willis. He's coming down the sidelines. He's got blocking. He scores! Ohio State takes it in with 21 seconds remaining to play in the first half. They've had the ball five times. They've scored four touchdowns, and they've fumbled it away the other time. That means that the defense is in deep, deep trouble. Ted Smith, number 60, must be given credit. He pulled out of the line, and he was the man who led Cornelius Green down the sidelines. And Green just made it into the corner. Now with 21 seconds, Clavin in for the extra point try. He's got another one. And the Buckeyes are making it look easy. As they go 61 yards in eight plays, using a minute and 48 seconds to jump out to a 28-7 lead. Oklahoma, remember today, who leads the AP poll, as we see the touchdown again, had a 21-20 struggle with Colorado. So it could be the Buckeyes are playing for number one and everybody's full when this one is done. And unless the UCLA defense can uh, shore up in the second half, uh, no doubt in my mind who's going to be number one in both polls. When you looked at the Ohio State schedule early in the year, you said, uh oh, look at here. Woody's got four tough ones in a row. Well, he smilingly said at the Big Ten luncheon back in the summertime, we might start faster than anybody can imagine. And that's just about what they've done, beating Michigan State, Penn State, North Carolina. And now with a hefty lead over UCLA, they'll kick off to Wally Henry and Eddie Ayers. I remember Woody telling me after his only losing season, 1959, when they won three, lost five, and tied one, that he wasn't as good as a coach as he used to be. And he said, Keith, that was because he knew too much about football and knew too many things could happen wrong. All right, it's picked up by Wally Henry. Henry comes scooting back out to the 31, 32-yard line, coughed it up, but he was down. 21-yard return. Woody got over that uh, wondering what could happen wrong and became very positive in his thinking. And uh, <laughs> it's been all Ohio State from that moment on. That was 1959, 3 5 and 1. He played USC right on this very field, lost uh, by a score of 17 to nothing, had a whole lot of injuries, went on to lose four more times that year. But since that time, he has not had a losing season. With only 16 seconds remaining on the clock, UCLA with the ball. Shara goes straight back. Ohio State in a contained defense. And they get Shara back on the 29-yard line. Eddie Beeman, number 67, who's only a sophomore out of Cincinnati, 246 pounds. And when you talk about, ask a question about Beeman, the defensive coaches just fairly light up like a lantern. So it's a big lead for Ohio State and Woody Hayes at the end of the first half. And here's Jim Lampley. Coach, with the exception of the one fumble in the UCLA drive, you've had a near-perfect half. Well, we're never perfect, but we did score the next four times we got the ball. But we always say at the half, the game is nothing to nothing, and that's the way it is. Woody Hayes. Now back up to Keith Jackson. All right, Jimmy. 
Ohio State 28, UCLA 7 after the first two quarters of play. And you're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. We'll return for the Fireman's Fun flashback at halftime activities at the Ohio State-UCLA game after this word about an oncoming show on ABC. Tuesday nights, meet the Cunningham family plus one. A hilarious combination of love... Sit on it, Richie. ...and motorcycle tracks. Roll into Tuesday with Happy Days. Then School Days with Gabe Cotter, a teacher in a class by himself. Good morning, Mr. Cotter. Now places with bright, shining faces. Excuse me, I was looking for my class. Welcome back, Cotter, and welcome to the best Tuesday on television with ABC. One of the features this year on our national telecasts here on NCAA football on ABC is a look into the past of the two teams that are playing. I'm Bill Fleming here on the sidelines at the Coliseum. And as Keith told you a little bit earlier, these two teams have met twice before. In 1961, Ohio State won 13-3. And then they were upset when they were number one ranked in the country. In 1962, right here in the Coliseum, when Larry Zeno kicked the field goal to win 9-7 for UCLA. Both of these schools have contributed to great All-America teams and to Heisman Award winners. And so tonight, we thought we'd take a look into the past at Heisman Trophy winners of both UCLA and Ohio State. It's time for the Fireman's Fund Flashback, brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent near you. Look for his name in the yellow pages. In 1944, halfback Les Horvath led the Buckeyes to an undefeated season in the Big Ten Championship. He was the Big Ten's leading rusher. And then in 1950, along came Vic Janowitz, the man who could do just about everything. He won the Heisman Trophy as a junior. He was a fine passer. He was also the team's punter and place kicker. In his junior year, he scored 16 touchdowns. And as a broken field runner, he was as dangerous as any man who ever played the game of football. In his three years as a Buckeye, his total yardage was well over a mile. One day against Iowa, his team scored 83 points. He accounted for six touchdowns and 10 extra points, a Big Ten record. He not only had great speed in the open, but he was tough when he was cornered. Watch him on this touchdown. It looks as if he can't possibly make it into the end zone. And then, along came Howard Hopalong Cassidy five years later. Hoppy has been called by his coach, Woody Hayes, the smartest runner he ever saw. He could use blockers like nobody else. Just watch this run to prove that point. In his final game, a 17-0 win over Michigan. And at UCLA in 1967, it was Gary Beeman, the quarterback, who won the Heisman Trophy. In this memorable 17-15 victory over Penn State, he completes this long pass. Gary Beban still holds the UCLA record for total offense and total scoring. And this was the winning touchdown against Penn State. So that's a look at the men who during the past 31 years have won four coveted Heisman trophies. You know, Fireman's Fund says, for the best insurance, look for our fire hat. But there's another symbol just as important. It belongs to the man who sells our insurance, the independent agent, because he represents not just us, but many fine companies to get you the very best deal around. So even if you forget our symbol, remember this one of the man who serves you first, your independent agent. He's got the one symbol it pays you to know. Fireman's Fund American. Oftentimes, you hear us refer to the men upstairs. These are the assistant coaches who coordinate the game plan, adjusting and improvising throughout the entire 60 minutes. It's constant pressure and requires instant decisions. Assistant coach Lynn Stiles of UCLA is one of these men working from a spotting position in the press box. From his position atop the huge stadium, he relays the upcoming UCLA defensive strategy to his colleagues on the sidelines. By hand signals, the defensive plan of attack is communicated to the field. In a matter of seconds, the defense prevents a successful offensive play. Such communication between the press box and the field provides all the coaches with invaluable information to help give them and their team a winning edge. 
As UCLA takes to the offense later in the game, new strategies are formulated upstairs. A new play is once again relayed to the field. The play proves successful as UCLA puts six more points on the scoreboard. The assistant coaches upstairs, an integral part of a winning football team. The preceding message was presented on behalf of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Here in the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the score, halftime, Ohio State 28, UCLA 7. But as you heard Woody Hayes say, it's still nothing to nothing as far as he's concerned. UCLA calls its uh, home here in the Coliseum as far as football is concerned, but their campus is some 10 miles away in Westwood. Jim Lampley was here earlier in the week to kind of take a look at the lifestyle of UCLA. Let's watch. Talk about Southern California to some snowbound, book-weary college student back in the East or the Midwest. Chances are he's going to conjure up a vision of endless summer, endless beaches, miles and miles of deep tans and beautiful girls. Well, the long summer's almost over here in Southern California. The beautiful girls and those who come to the beaches to see them have gone back 10 minutes east of here to Westwood, to UCLA. And that is not such a bad place to be. UCLA is in one of the most glamorous settings possible, right next door to Beverly Hills, Hollywood, and the television and motion picture industry. There are a lot of dreams being dreamed here, many of them in the School of Theater Arts, where students sharpen their talents in hopes that the big break might be theirs. And if you consider that Berkeley or Columbia was an accurate symbol of the activist political student consciousness of the 60s, then UCLA is equally as strong a distillation of the fragmented, personalized campus atmosphere of the 70s. Here you can pick up on every popular movement of the day, from vegetarianism to the newest service sorority, Catholic Youth Club to Young Socialist Alliance, Zen Buddhism to Campus Ski Club. Or simply relax and have fun in an environment where the atmosphere is dictated by constant sunshine, easy affluence, unlimited access to physical activity, and a seemingly universal athletic urge. A lot of the popular mythology surrounding UCLA is true. A place where almost everybody, male or female, seems to look good and feel good. On the field right now, the UCLA Marching Band. The band under the direction of Kelly James is presenting its halftime show tonight. And uh, those of you who like country music are really going to enjoy this because the theme of the show tonight is Nashville. The actual title is called Hoedown 75, and the music of Hank Williams will begin things off. We'll have the UCLA Song Girls, the Golden Girl, Janet Hillis, and we get underway right now with Hoedown 75. lovely Janet Hillis to the music of I Saw the Light. And now the Honky Tonk Blues coming up. UCLA marching band will go into a formation of a fiddle because as they move into the fiddle we're reminded that it is the symbol of country and western music 
And now we'll hear Thank God I'm a Country Boy, that great favorite made famous by John Denver. And the UCLA Song Girls will be featured in this number. the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Goodyear Blimp, on a perfect October night, showing you these spectacular pictures here at halftime where the score is Ohio State 28 and UCLA 7. A country boy. John Denver's great hit. And now the band goes into the formation of the hat. Old MacDonald had a farm, and on this farm he had a cowboy hat. Well, you know what's coming, of course, if you've been following the pop lists of late. Rhinestone Cowboy, up there very high on the list. Led the nation for about five weeks in a row. Glenn Campbell's favorite number. And this will feature the Golden Girl. Yes, they have a Golden Girl out here, too, as well as at Purdue. Her name at UCLA is Janet Hillis. So the Rhinestone Cowboy coming up. some great music put out by the band of UCLA under the direction of Kelly James, featuring Janet Hillis as the Golden Girl. And now, an old-fashioned hoedown. This is the grand finale as the entire cast now returns as we have the cheerleaders, the song girls, and even the Sawani Swoon singers. Cotton Fields of Home. Incidentally, the drum major coming out on the 50-yard line there is Kim Burdick. featuring the Sawani Swoon Singers here on the 50-yard line and everybody else in the old-fashioned hoedown. Well, no doubt this would have been the halftime show a couple of weeks ago when Tennessee was in town, but as you know at that time, UCLA was not in session. They haven't had a whole lot of time to prepare this show, but they've done a great job.
the solid goal sound of the UCLA marching band in an old-fashioned hoedown, a tribute to Nashville. Incidentally, the Ohio State Marching Band, one of the best in the nation, did not make the trip out to the West Coast, but you will see the Ohio State Marching Band on November the 22nd at the Michigan-Ohio State game in Ann Arbor. Both bands will be performing that day, and you'll see the game here exclusively on ABC. It's a great season of college football, and of course, next week we continue it with our national telecast from East Lansing, Michigan. Be sure just to uh, check your local listings for the time of that game between Michigan and Michigan State. AMF, the worldwide producer of leisure and industrial products, is one of our sponsors bringing you the Ohio State UCLA game. Also, it's brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet announces a new kind of American car, the new Chevy Chevette. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken for hot, tender, thickened, looking good. And fixings, a good meal is still a good deal at the Colonel's. Halftime score, 28 for Ohio State, 7 for UCLA. Back in a moment. Watch gold medal winner Terry McDermott set the pace for the new Goodyear F-32 all-winter radio with flex and belts. We call it the ice radio. Its amazing rubber compound stays flexible even at temperature below zero, so it can conform to the icy surface of the road. Plus, it has a unique tread design for deep snow. For a firm hold on winter, get an alternative to metal studs. Get the ice radio, only from Goodyear. We know. You feel trapped. You want to get out where freedom begins. Simple. Take off on a legend, a Harley-Davidson Freedom Machine. This one's a classic, the 1200cc Electroglide. Harley-Davidson has met quality and performance for more than 70 years. That's why AMF puts its name on the line, too. And that name adds even more value to sports products like Harley-Davidson motorcycles. AMF brings out the best in you. You're paying for a tune-up, whether you get one or not. Three out of five cars on the road today need a tune-up. And depending on tank size, most are wasting one to two gallons of gasoline every tank full. That's money down the drain. Solution? A tune-up with champion spark plugs. A tune-up can help save gasoline. UCLA coach Dick Vermeil, Coach, earlier this week you said if there was a better football team than this, they might be in the NFL, and certainly they've shown that. Well, they've, they've looked awfully good, and I think we've made them look pretty good. Uh, what we have to do is when we get the ball offensively, we've got to do more with it. We've had it three times, scored once, and punted twice, and I've been worried all week if they got the ball, we may never get it back, and that's been the case. You think uh, your guys might have been a little too high at first? They looked super on the first drive and then seemed to go a little flat. No, they weren't too high. Uh, I don't think that at all. It's just that uh, Ohio State's a good football team, and we didn't stop them and they scored and they gained momentum and now what we have to do is not try to win the game here in just a matter of plays we've got to go after them maintain some ball control see if we can't get more points than they score good luck thank, thank you. you very much keep jackson all right jimmy bud wilkinson's upstairs and we're ready to go with quarter number three as you see what happens statistically in the first half it's uh, all ohio state and the all-important statistic again that uh, bottom line when you've got a team that you worry about the defense, uh, as Dick Vermeil did with UCLA, and you have it proven with Ohio State keeping the ball 21 minutes and 8 seconds out of the first 30 minutes of the game, uh, you recognize the problem is one of defense, and unless UCLA will move their linebackers up closer to the line of scrimmage to put more immediate pressure on the Ohio State offensive line, I think they're going to be in deep trouble every time the Buckeyes get the ball. Here's the rushing comparison so far, and it boggles your mind, doesn't it? The pressure, of course, was on Griffin and Johnson, who had been the big guns, and they left the slots open for Green, and he took advantage of them. Well-balanced at their deep. Thomas is number 37. Ayers backs up in the end zone. Going to come out with it. Three yards deep. And he got it out to about the 19-yard line before Kelton Densler, number 37, brings him down. So UCLA starts first down at their 19. For those of you on the West Coast, stay tuned following tonight's game for Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell. Joining Howard, Alvin King, Charlo, Jim Neighbors, to the basic roller. Their American debut. From the baseball world, Yogi Berra, Billy Martin, Bill Verdon, and Gene Mock. Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell following the ball game. Here on the West Coast, the Western time zone. They give the ball to Eddie Ayers, 
And he just takes a terrible thumping as he comes up to the line of scrimmage and gets about one yard. Here's Bill Fleming. As far as the top ten are concerned, it looks like Ohio State is well on its way to retain the number one spot. Oklahoma had a tough time with Colorado. As you can see, USC beat Iowa, Nebraska beat Miami, Missouri lost to Michigan, A&M won, Texas is winning big tonight against Utah State, Notre Dame lost to Michigan State, Alabama and Penn State both won. But it certainly does set up next week when Michigan State plays Michigan. Okay, Keith. And Shara sets on second down and nine. Wants to throw it, runs for his life. Eddie Beeman's after it, gets the pass away, and it's incomplete. And Shara delivered a great pass intended for Henry, or was Sarpy, I guess it was, number four. Oh, Henry, number eight. I don't know how in the world he got it away with that much accuracy. And he had it right on the money, as you said, Keith. Uh, it appeared that Henry just uh, was so surprised that he actually got the ball to him that he forgot to look it in. Looks like Jim Brown down on the field, uh, running back. Brown in a blocking posture with Sherrod out trying to pass. And watch Aaron Brown, 55, the middle guard for Ohio State. He's really a good one on this pursuit. Jim Brown takes him on right there. It's just a question of who was the lowest. <laughs> and uh, it was... Uh, Aaron Brown coming across was a little lower, a little better hitting position, and he simply rolled him right out of there. Well, Aaron Brown is 224, and Jim Brown is 207. It's a 35-7 score, and we'll be back in a moment. America, Chevrolet wants you to have exactly the wagon you need. Chevrolet! Let's start with Vega, our lowest-priced wagon. Hi, nice, Chevrolet. I like more style, though. That better? A bank of We need more room. We'll fix that. This mid-size Chevelle Malibu Classic Estate is the right size for many families. We need even more wagons. Well, there's this handsome regular size Caprice Estate. You, you do offer a lot of wagon choices. We're not done yet, America. The Chevy Sport Van. The space vehicle that can carry up to 12 passengers with its available seats. And the Chevy Suburban. A super wagon for families that need more than a wagon. They should call you America's Family Station Wagon Builder, Chevrolet. They do. Couldn't we see them again? You got it, America. This man is a six-time world champion named Larry Mahan. Next Saturday, he and his fellow cowboys will once again be displaying their unusual talents at an event you've enjoyed before, the National Finals Rodeo from Oklahoma City. Larry will join us for expert commentary on events like saddle bronc riding, steer wrestling, and Brahma bull riding. Also from London, the World Water Skiing Championships. Men and women from around the world competing in slalom, jumping, and tricks events. Consult your local listings for the exact time of ABC's Wide World of Sports in your area next Saturday over most of these stations. Jim Brown being helped off the field. Nick Bonamici, several of the Buckeyes coming across to slap him on the back, and he really took a wallop. Watch this collision between Jim Brown, 33, and Aaron Brown, 55, of Ohio State. You see that Aaron Brown hit him right on the point of the chin with the top of his helmet, and I mean he went down in a lump. It and looks moral, like he's all right. Moral of the story is stay low. <laughs> oh. Third down now for UCLA, and nine yards to go. John Sherrill back to throw. Again, he's got pressure. Eddie Beeman, number 67, who has taken this particular series to torment John Shara. And there's young Jim Brown on the bench. He's still not quite with it. He really took a zap. Back to the 11-yard line, and there's the cut where the helmet hit the chin. My goodness. So he's through for the night. No he will out. be low the next time he blocks, I believe. UCLA now will have to punt it away. Ohio State. The defense with the 35-7 lead just teeing off. Sullivan's kick spiraled out of there. Taken by Tim Fox. He runs away from three Bruins. They finally get him right about midfield. 39-yard punt, one-yard return, and here's Bill. All right, let's take a look at some of the scores tonight that have happened across the country. First of all, Boston College rolling over Villanova 41-12. And a great deal of interest in this one. South Carolina upsetting Baylor 24 to 13. 
And how about this? Florida over LSU at a key Southeastern Conference game, 34 to nothing. And Vanderbilt over Tulane in the fourth quarter. That one's not finished yet. Okay, Keith. Uh, Jim Carlin's got him singing songs down in Columbia, South Carolina right this season. Bash Nagel again in motion. Cornelius Green still the quarterback. The handoff fakes to the fullback and Green carries. Goes from the line of scrimmage down to about the UCLA 43-yard line before Terry Tautola brings him down. So that's a gain of about seven for Cornelius Green, who's continuing to roll up big yardage tonight. He and Archie Griffin are both over 100 in the game. Cornelius now with 14 carries and 127 yards. He's been the dominant figure offensively, if you can discount that Ohio State offensive line. You can't discount it. They just absolutely are taking them apart. It's second down and a long three for Ohio State. Bashnagel getting in his road work. Cornelius Green makes it out to Archie Griffin, keeps it, gets to about the 41-yard line, maybe a little short of his first down with 8.35 to go in the third quarter. So the Oklahoma Sooners having to struggle for their life today against Colorado in winning 21-20 over the Buffaloes. And Ohio State cruising along here against UCLA. The Buckeyes bidding for the top spot in everybody's poll. Larry Keene out at tight end for Ohio State and uh, a big freshman from Tempe, 255 pounds, 6'5", Jimmy Moore is in. And it's good for the first down as the fake, it was a fine fake to the fullback Johnson and Green keeping, turning inside and now Cornelius continuing to pile up yardage, getting the first down at the UCLA 38 yard line. People used to talk about Ohio State being uh, three yards in a cloud of dust football team, just meaning they're going to keep hitting straight ahead, try to pick up first downs. This team has the ability to do that with Johnson hitting inside and also, of course, with Archie Griffin hitting inside, but it's a much more wide open, versatile attack with the options run by Green and Green's passing efficiency. Very, very good. First down. Call it the 36 yard line and Archie Griffin. It's to about the 32. Let's have another look at number 76 in blue, Cliff Frazier, the middle guard. He's been the bright light in the defensive unit that's been having so much trouble. You can see him taking on Applegate here, riding with the play, and Griffith cuts back. He moves back inside and makes the tackle. Individually, Frazier's been outstanding in the ball game. He needs some support. <laughs> he does. Second down. Call it six. It's Griffin. Archie Griffin down to the 22-yard line. Another first down for Ohio State. Some Dale move. Curry and Pat Schmidt on the tackle. Looked like he was down six yards further back. Three men were trying to get to him, and he just had so much battle.
and Ohio State. Green still got it, slips inside, running behind Pete Johnson. He's nailed just inside the 20. Haley made a good play, but uh, did not manage to hold on to Green. He had made the penetration, but couldn't make the tackle. Frazier again, the tackle. You see Archie Griffin closing in on Ed Marinaro's NCAA rushing record for a career. And if you just count the number of carries that he's had as against Marinero's number of carries, it's remarkable efficiency per try. Because Howard Steven holds the all-time record. He didn't play all of it at Division I football, however. Green going inside again as he goes down the line on the option play. And he goes from the 19 to about the 16, where he is cut down by Levi Armstrong, number 32. Let's call it the 12-yard line, where it's third down and five. Oh, excuse me, the 17. So from that sudden burst of emotion at the beginning of the game, when the Bruins took their first offensive possession and drove 73 yards, they really haven't been in a ball game since. Green to throw. Oh, goodness sakes, he took it that time from Raymond Burke. First time tonight they've been able to get Cornelius Green. So Raymond Burks letting some of the frustration loose on that particular play. Burks, the outside linebacker, really a defensive end, coming with the snap. Ohio State did not think he would be coming because they pulled everyone to the left side of your screen. No one blocked him, and he's in to hit Green before he can get rid of the ball. So they'll go for the field goal try by Clayman. Fourth down. Snap is bad. Center penalty flag flutters around on the field. That kick would have been from 39 yards out, and it would be the first time that UCLA has stopped Ohio State. Let's see how the penalty goes. It's against UCLA. Well, when it goes bad, it goes bad. So after the sack of Cornelius Green now, the ball is moved back down to the 17-yard line, where it'll be a 34-yard field goal try for Tom Clavin. 20 of distance. He's got it. And so with four minutes and 22 seconds, there is sorrow in the Coliseum. The Buckeyes running away, 38 to 7. Joe Crowley, the dry look. Nancy Weiss, the dry look, look. Bill Yankus, the dry look. Betty Vino, the dry look, look. Lou D'Amico, the dry look. Mary Ellen Campbell, the dry look, look. People do notice the improvement when you switch to the dry look from Gillette. The only aerosol hair control that lets you pick the formula and the setting for your hair. The Dry Look from Gillette. The Dry Look Look from who knows. What a face. You try to face. It's the perfect face. Yes, it is. Feel so smooth. Twin blades smooth. So perfectly smooth. The best there is. You took your perfect face and gave it all. Get the closest thing to a perfect shave. The Gillette Track 2 shaving system in regular or adjustable cartridges. That perfect Track 2 face. Gerald Thomas, number 37. Eddie Ayers, number 30, or the deep men. As Fladini kicks it off for Ohio State. Good high kick. That's Ayers at the 2. Well, there's just, there's just no opening to run through. Duncan Griffin, 46, baby brother of Archie. There are three Griffins on the squad. Duncan and Ray, who are defensive backs, and of course, Archie Ray was moved over to a defensive back position so he could play rather than sitting in on the bench as an offensive running back. And now here comes UCLA again. Seventh possession only once have they had the ball outside of their own 20-yard line. That was on the 33. 
Tyler and Ayers are the setbacks. Sheriff still got it. Dives ahead. And he gets it up to the 26. Here's Jim. Ohio State graduates a lot of quality football players this year, but there's very little doubt that the wheel will keep rolling in the right direction. And perhaps even more so in the future, because Ohio State has started to get a lot of great athletes from places they don't normally recruit. This year, there's a great freshman quarterback from Dallas, Texas, a tight end that Keith has mentioned, who's from Tempe, Arizona, and another player from La Palma, California. All of these people are guys who demonstrated just an extraordinary interest in going to Ohio State, contacted Ohio State themselves, and were recruited by film. UCLA offside. Number 79, Greg Taylor. Uh, left guard it was, jumping over the left side of the line. So that'll back him up five yards. Give me a chance to talk about the Pacific 8 Conference, which is proud of its many superb coaches, and none certainly deserves more accolades than UCLA's John Wooden, who led the Bruins to 10 NCAA basketball titles. The Pac-8 among the many friends saluting Coach John Wooden at a special retirement testimonial dinner October 14 here in the city at Pauley Pavilion, where they'll be standing at that one. You know, you think of errors usually as being fumbles and interceptions. Uh, penalties, however, are a major error. Ohio State has yet to be penalized tonight. On second down 11, the Bruins from the 21-yard line. Jarrett trying to get a pass away. Nobody to throw to, and they run for his life and takes a whack out of bounds. Now, that could have gotten the flag, but the pursuit was out of bounds. And the momentum carried Beeman into Sherrill. I think Eddie Beeman sort of made John his personal property here in the third quarter. Well coordinated defense. That was a little bootleg play trying to get outside to the top of the screen where he could throw it. Everybody was covered. Uh, Sherrill had to reverse his field. Normally, a uh, less well balanced defense would be out of position, but Ohio State was right there. So it is third down on that play, and the loss is back to the 19, 18-yard line. On a third down at about 13. No, they're going to put it up. And the Buckeyes are coming. Passes away. Fox is out there. Got it. Fox from behind. Fox. The man that got pulled a little bit out of position. He was looking run. Max Midlam was the man, number 21, who stayed with the receiver, and it was Midlam who saved the touchdown. Chuck, he's got very good speed. He's in for the injured Anderson, who's one of the leading receivers in UCLA history. This is simply a fly pattern, and he turns it on. And he's wide open, but was picked up by Midlam, who prevented the touchdown. 38 yards on the pass play. And off his inside this time to Wendell Tyler carrying the ball, and he found a little bit of room for a change before Midlam again comes from his defensive halfback position to make the stop. The crowd tonight, 55,482. That's the smallest crowd Ohio State's seen this year. They had over 80,000 in Michigan State. They had 88,000 for their game at Columbus against Penn State and 87,750 at Columbus for North Carolina. People and they very well set an all-time record for attendance this year. Nothing like watching a winner play. <laughs> Wendell Tyler breaks it, gets his first down as he moved it from the Ohio State 35 on second down and two. He punches it down to the Buckeye 27 where the Bruins have it first down. Here's Bill. Well, looking ahead to, to a couple of weeks from now, Texas is leading Utah State 61 to 7, and Arkansas, with about three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, is leading TCU 19 to 8. So we're kind of keeping our eye on that game in uh, in Fayetteville on the 18th of October. Okay, Keith. First down, UCLA at the Ohio State 27. Sarah turns it, gets it down to the 22-yard line for five yards with a minute 43 to go in the third quarter. Coming up at the conclusion of tonight's game, the announcement of the Chevrolet scholarship winners for the outstanding offensive and defensive players of the game. This drive by UCLA is very reminiscent of the first time they had the ball. They drove 73 yards and uh, scored to go ahead 7 to nothing. But since that time, they've been throttled totally by the Ohio State defense until this drive. Bucks are still playing the first unit defensively. Shara gives the ball to Ayers. Ayers had cut right instead of left. He might have had a couple of more yards, but he gets enough for the first down as he picks up six, maybe seven. And his first down, UCLA, at the Ohio State 14. So the folks in the Coliseum get a little chance to 
scoop it up for the hometown ball club is Pat Curto. Made the stop, and time called now by Ohio State with a minute 10 to go in the third quarter. It's cooled off quite a bit, but Ohio State remains red hot, leading 38 to 7. Michigan meets Michigan State at East Lansing on NCAA College Football. Next Saturday, in a great Big Ten rivalry that dates back to 1898, Michigan's Wolverines have dominated the series, and they won again last year 21-7, so the Spartans will be hungry for a victory at home. Great college action, Michigan versus Michigan State, next Saturday on NCAA Football. Over most of these ABC stations, check your local listings for the time in your area. This is bad. For those of you who are interested in the championship baseball playoffs, the Boston Red Sox breaking on top of the Oakland A's today, 7-1. Seven, to seven errors in the game, and Oakland put the Red Sox out front early by bobbling the ball around in that first inning. With a total of seven errors in the game, they play in Boston again tomorrow. Cincinnati defeating Pittsburgh by a score of 8-3 to three in that one, and little Joe Morgan had himself quite a day. So Cincinnati and Boston break out to take one nothing leads in the respective baseball championship playoffs. All right, now UCLA with a first down at the Ohio State 14. Trailing by a score of 38 to 7, trying to make it more respectable. Jarrah keeps it, delivers the ball back, and it's Taylor, and he gets it down to about the five. Well, they'll mark it at the six. Rudzinski, number 84, shoved him out. That time he had to play call to the proper side. You could see the Ohio State defense getting ready to shoot the gap against Tyler to the left-hand side of your screen. The play came to the right-hand side where they were one man short. Tyrone Harris now has gone in as uh, Woody Hayes sends in his goal line defense. Griffin number 48 comes out to cover the wide receiver, Sarpy. It's second down. They need about a yard and a half for a first down. Get the ball. No, Sarah kept it, and John gets inside the five. It's going to be UCLA first down and goal to go at the Ohio State two-yard line. Excellent uh, play that time by Shara. He rode the fake to Tyler, hitting inside to the point that Ohio State took the fake and then went out to the next lane to pick up the necessary yardage for the first down. He's a very poised, fine college quarterback. Buckeyes digging in. UCLA attacking. Air. Touchdown. Eddie Air goes in with seven seconds to play in the third quarter. Randy Cross and Bob Kazarian let him in. 78 yards and 10 plays. Got to feel this is an offensive team that's capable of moving the ball against anybody, but uh, defensively, the Bruins thus far this year have not been impressive enough to keep them solidly in the game. Uh, if their defense improves, they could be a factor in the Pac-8 race. Jeff Dankworth will hold, and Brett White now will try for the extra point. He's got it. And so with seven ticks remaining on the third quarter clock, it is now a 38 to 14 ball game as we look down on the Coliseum from the Goodyear Brent Columbia with Nick Nicolari at the control. For those of you here on the West Coast, Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell follows immediately after tonight's game. Joining Howard Allen King, Charlotte, Jim Neighbors, the Bay City Rollers make their American debut. Billy Martin, Yogi Berra, Billy Burton, and Gene Moss. Singing? You'll see live from Marine World in San Francisco, David McMillan and the Flying Tigers. Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell, immediately following tonight's game for those of you in the Pacific time zone. Here's the kickoff by White. Knocks it deep and out of the end zone. So Ohio State will have the ball first down at their own 20. So in the closing half of that third quarter, oh, UCLA beginning to pick up a little bit of steam. They now trail 38-14. Cornelius Green goes back onto the field. Woody Hayes bringing both kickers with his 48-player limit 
So actually, he has two teams, two deep at every position, and four extra, and that's it. And the temperature has been quite comfortable now for the better part of an hour. It's been cooled off in a hurry. Pete Johnson, the fullback, carries. He gets out to about the 21-yard line, and that's all. Archie Griffin and Johnson are still your setbacks with Brian Bashnagel playing the wing. So the third quarter ends with Ohio State leading 38 to 14. Introduces a pocket sized camera that gives you two ways to take your pictures. Far shot, flick of the finger, and near shot. A Kodak pocket camera that lets you choose between normal and telephoto. A boat on a lake, flick, girls in a boat. The new Kodak Tele Instamatic camera, less than $36 at your photo dealers now. Sonny Bono stars on The Six Million Dollar Man tomorrow night at 8, 7 central on ABC. As we go to the fourth quarter of play now, Ohio State second down, eight yards to go from the 22-yard line. Cornelius Green rolling back to throw, gets the ball loose, and UCLA has got the ball. That's the first Brad time. Buster, number 63. First time, Keith, that uh, UCLA has been in the defense with the linebackers up close and everybody pouring, and they got to him. Somebody busted the ball loose from Green. He tried to bring it down, and Frazier was the guy putting the heat on. You can see everybody packed up in. Frazier shooting the gap to the inside. He's picked off slightly, but he's got such great body balance that he doesn't even lose his momentum forward, and he's in and hits Green. The ball bounces loose, and UCLA is in business on the 15-yard line. First down at the Ohio State 15. Shara. Keeps it. Lifts it out to Tyler. Going to the corner. Touchdown. Nope, he's out of bounds. He did not reach the end zone. He's out at about the two-yard line. Ray Griffin shoved him out. Ray Griffin recovering. Got him out of bounds, just inside the two-yard line. Uh, it's first down race. and goal to go. UCLA about a yard and a half away. Ayers and Tyler are the setback. Shara, Keith, does not make it. Ed Thompson at the top of the stack. Bonamici and Beeman at the bottom of it. And Aaron Brown, number 55. And there are your third quarter stats. In the middle of the third quarter, UCLA put together a great drive, which picked up the total yardage. And they also played even time in the third quarter. But Ohio State's great first half still gives them a big, big edge statistically. Second down, goal to go from the one. Air. He's right there, but he didn't get in. Tyrone Harris, 66. Hume, 54. There was everybody there, Keith, including the pride of Ohio State. Yeah, Don't let him score. The bottom is number 67, that big sophomore from Cincinnati, Eddie Beaver. He is really a horse. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. All right, the ball is just inches away from the goal line. Third down goal to go. Here's touchdown. Eddie Ayers gets 
That's the second goal of the night. With 13.29 to go in the ball game. The Bruins third back. That's all it takes. <laughs> and it can happen quick. Well, it's a funny thing, you know, when you seemingly have a game in hand and you tend to ease up just a little bit. Look out. Brett White drives to the point. Bad snap. And he's rolled down way back. And so the Bruins lose the extra point opportunity. The 13-29 to go. Ohio State leads UCLA 38 to 20. Beautiful lawn, but it's a big job keeping up with the grass. And you've got better things to do. You need a riding mower, one with electric start and an eight horsepower balanced engine for easy going comfort. But most important, with quality. You can count on that because AMF puts its name on this line too. And that name adds more value to so many fine leisure and sports products. AMF brings out the best in you. This is an ad for Fireman's Fund, but it's also an ad for this company, and this, and this. Because the people who sell our insurance sell theirs too. In fact, independent agents handle many companies to get you the best deal. So always look for an independent agent. We hope he covers you with this. After all, this is an ad for Fireman's Fund. Fireman's Fund American. Onside kick possibility exists. Ohio State lined up anticipating it. Rep White. Deep men are Archie Griffin and Lenny Willis for Ohio State. White kicks it away. 13-29 very early. To be fine onside kick. Archie Griffin back at the three. Reads is blocking very well, but that time UCLA's downfield coverage was very good under the very high kick. And it was Willie Beeman, number 55 for the Bruins, that made the stop on Griffin back at the 17-yard line. If UCLA defense can shore it up as they did on the last Ohio State possession, they could really begin to put a little interest back in the game as to how it might ultimately come out. Cornelius Green joins the huddle now. And he'll have Griffin, Bash Nagel, and Pete Johnson as his backfield. With Lenny Willis coming wide to the bottom of your picture. And they're in the forcing defense again. Griffin. Puts it back into the middle. Oh, he's something. He takes it all the way out to the 28-yard line. Person and Besser make the stop for UCLA. Here's Jim. Easy to keep your eyes on Griffin and Green and Johnson, but a lot of people consider Brian Bashnagel, the fourth member of the Buckeye backfield, the one who never touches the ball, one of the better all-around athletes on the whole Ohio State team. In addition, Bashnagel's a brilliant student and now is interviewing for a possible nomination for a Rhodes Scholarship, hopes to follow Pat Hayden to England. Keith? Pat Hayden, the former USC quarterback. That's Johnson. He runs into a snack at the 30-yard line, and right there is Mr. Frazier, number 76. Well, I tell you, talking about horses. Individually, he's been as good as anybody on the football field tonight. Let's watch him as the middle guard. And, uh, they have a stack defense to the top of your screen. You can see Frazier taking on two men. Double team, he spins off the double team, which is really a great agility move for a man that weighs 254 pounds. And once again, Frazier makes the tackle. Second down, eight yards to go from the 30-yard line for Ohio State. Green back to throw. Getting pressure. Gets it all. Intercepted by Barney Person. Intercepted. Now UCLA all fired up as the football at the Ohio State 38 yard line. They put one on here, Keith, and the game begins to tighten. When the momentum goes this bad, believe me, things can happen. They're going to put it down at the Buckeye 37. Turnovers now. Three to one. Ohio State. And this UCLA offense is fresh. They haven't been on the field too much. Gets the 
picks it up as a man. Wally Henry did not, or did he? Yes, he did. He waved him off in a hurry. I thought he meant he might have dumped it, but he came down hard. But it's a 19-yard gain and a first down at the Ohio State 38. Let's take a look at it again. The inside handoff fake, and Shara comes up with the ball and drills it in, and that is a remarkable catch by Henry. Hang on. We've got 11 minutes and 40 seconds to play in the game. Wendell Tyler inside the 10 to the 8-yard line, and Ray Griffin saves the touchdown. 11 yards. Get the goal line defense coming back in for Ohio State. Ball is closer to the seven, I believe. See the time. It's a 38 to 20 ball game, and the Bruins trying to get another one on the board. Tyler, five, three yard line. It'll be second down and goal to go from the three as Ed Thompson and Nick Bonamici made the stop for the Buckeyes. He really did some great running there. There was not much room. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, but battled his way forward. Lost the ball momentarily, but the official said he was down. All is right on the three. McKinley, Khan, Cross. Kazarian, Coppins, along the front for UCLA. And Shara. Very, very wise call by Shara. Obviously, his team a little bit mixed up. 38-20 with 10-32 to play in the game. Five cars. Five dead batteries. But we're going to start all five with one battery. A two year old Sears diehard. The Sears diehard. It lives up to its name. Sold only at Sears. This guy happens to be successful. Very successful. And he looks it. You can bet that his hair isn't dry, stiff, or wild-looking. His hair looks healthy, alive, naturally terrific, because he uses this natural conditioner every day. Brill cream, regular or new anti-dandruff. Just a little dab of brill cream is the natural way to make success go to your head. All right, the conference concludes on the sidelines for UCLA. The Bruins now come on second down. Goal to go from the Ohio State three-yard line. 38 to 20. If they can punch it in and kick the point, they would trail by 11 to 10-32 to play in the ball game. Ohio State in the goal line defense. Eddie Ayer takes it. And running behind Randy Cross, he gets down to about the one and a half. I don't believe he quite reached the one. Ed Thompson, number nine, Bonanici, 75, Beeman, 67. Tendency's always that you want to go wide down here. It looks so tough inside, but going wide, you're either going to make it in one play or you're going to lose five yards. And when you've got that extra down or two, better percentage to try to hit it a little straighter ahead. Well, they better do something this time. It's third down, goal to go from the two. Shara caught behind the line of scrimmage. And it was number 54, Ken Kuhn, who made the play for Ohio State. And he just came on a blitz, and he got Shara. He didn't really nail him, but he got a leg, and that was enough. Then along came a lot of help. Couldn't tell whether Shara wanted to option the player or whether he was going to throw a forward pass. Uh, no time to really get a good look to see what play was actually called. All right, time has been taken on the field. 9.40 to go in the ball game, and UCLA is now backed up to the five-yard line with fourth down coming up. 
This man is a six-time world champion named Larry Mahan. Next Saturday, he and his fellow cowboys will once again be displaying their unusual talents at an event you've enjoyed before, the National Finals Rodeo from Oklahoma City. Larry will join us for expert commentary on events like saddle bronc riding, steer wrestling, and Brahma bull riding. Also from London, the World Water Skiing Championships. Men and women from around the world competing in slalom, jumping, and tricks events. Consult your local listings for the exact time of ABC's Wide World of Sports in your area next Saturday over most of these stations. Dick Vermeil on the right, his quarterback John Shera on the left. Ohio State's goal line defense responding brilliantly on that third down play as they threw Shera back to the five-yard line. It's fourth down, goal to go now from the five for UCLA. Woody Hayes on one side of the field. He's got his big guys out there. And I'll tell you, the Ohio State defense has been working from the middle of the third quarter on. They've been on the field most of the time. The odds there is some kind of a pass run option by Shara here. Ohio State knows that those are the odds. Henry and Sharpie wide left. You're right, bud. Oh, Beeman. Pass. Kicked away. Penalty flag down in the end zone. Uh, but again, an interference call against Ohio State. What a move Jarrah made. He was trapped back there. He gave it that little fake, rolled back the other way. Without that brilliant, brilliant move on his part, he'd never gotten the pass off. Because Eddie Beeman was all over it. They're talking now. On the goal line, Ken Kuhn, number 54, defensive linebacker. They're talking to him. First indication was pass interference, defensive. But after the long conversation with Kuhn, Ohio State, Tim Fox, kind of hot about it. I think Fox is overhearing it and says that it was against UCLA, uh, judging by his... What it looks like it was. Apparently, I still haven't had a definition from the referee. Now we're going to get it. We got the pushing indication. And it's against the offense. And so the Ohio State Buckeyes will take over the football at the five. So there was a flurry of excitement there. A very confusing call also. Uh, I really couldn't tell myself, uh, not having seen the play, exactly what happened. But uh, you can have offensive interference as well as defensive interference. When the ball is in the air, both sides have an equal right to it. And the crowd, of course, being a home crowd, figures that the officials miscalled that it is defensive interference, not offensive interference. the crowd hoots. Cornelius Green simply takes his team into the end zone for another huddle. Now let's see if the UCLA defense can contain the Buckeyes. Ohio State, 9-33. The play in the ball game comes up first down just inside the five. Their own five. Full house backfield. Pete Johnson, the fullback. He's out to about the eight-yard line for the better part of four yards on the carry. And Woody Hayes going to his robust key formation. He believes they can always make a first down operating out of that set. Well, of course, he'd like to just chunk it along here and grind it out with 9-10 to play in the game. Very interesting statistic. Ohio State's averaged 8.6 yards on first down. Second down, six from the eight. Johnson again, 10-11-12. He's about two and a half yards short of his first down. That's that old Woody Hayes three yards in a cloud of dust offense, but it's very tough to keep him from making a first down when they go to it. Ron Ayers comes in at a guard position now for Ohio State. Big, replacing, big play. Replacing Bill Lukens, he may have brought a play. I doubt it. On third down, let's call it three. 
Johnson again. Fumbled the ball, I believe, or Green on the handoff. Never got it to him cleanly, and Cornelius just kept it. And Cliff Frazier was right there. Beautiful line charge again. Since UCLA has gone into that gambling, forcing defense, they've looked very good against Ohio State. The ball is back on the nine-yard line, fourth down. And Spladini in the end zone to punt. It's Ohio State's first punt of this ball game, and Spladini averaging coming into this ball game 46 yards. One man pressure, and it's not a particularly good kick. At the 43 yard line, UCLA will have the ball at the Ohio State 43. Here's Jim. I talked to an official about the controversial ruling on the interference call. What happened is that line judge Gilbert Marchman overruled the official who had made the interference call, saying that the ball had been tipped before the interference took place. At the time the ball was tipped, it became a free ball. There could be no interference after that point. Keith? Thank you, Jimmy. 44 yard line. They put the ball down, and here comes UCLA knocking on the door again. 35-yard punt by Spladini. Wally Henry in motion. Shara gets his pass off. Incomplete. He led Wendell Tyler just a little too much. Tyler had some room. If he'd have burned him with the ball on the letters, he could have turned it upfield for quite a bit. And Shara could have kept the ball himself and turned it upfield for a bunch. A lot of openings. Ed Thompson, linebacker, again had dropped off and was out there, but Ed was trailing the play. 7.35 as the clock stops on that incomplete pass, and it's second down 10, UCLA at the Buckeye 44. Sharon, still got it. Caught and dragged down by Ken Kuhn, number 54, for Ohio State. Linebacker on the left side, just reading it, and riding along with it. Did not commit himself, just stayed with Shara. UCLA put it in the air only seven times in the ball game so far. I remember that John Shara was injured. His left shoulder was mildly separated from the Tennessee game. Uh, he may be hurt in the pad. Third down and seven to go. He's straight back to throw. Gets it off, has a man, it's complete. Caught by Don Pedersen, number 85, the tight end. That time he was on the money. 15 yards. Here's Pedersen. Fine protection by the UCLA line. Pedersen just running a diagonal across the field and he's wide open. Almost broke it for the score, but did pick up the big first down on third down. Clock running at 6.45 to go in the game. Time now definitely the ally of Ohio State. Ball is at the Buckeye, 26. Shara, Hopkins. Team got it. Boy, oh, I tell you. No, it's Brzezinski, 84. 84 went wide with it. The defensive end. There's good speed along that defensive front for Ohio State. Kuhn riding along with the play on the preceding play to make it. And now it's Brzezinski running wide. When you have a good defensive end that can always contain and keep the quarterback inside, you've got the beginning of stopping a quarterback like Shira who would like to exercise the pass run option. Now it's Ohio State calling timeout with 6.05 to play in the ball game. The Buckeyes spend the timeout with a score, Ohio State 38, UCLA 20. Hey, fellas, I need eight sets of this 100-page book for a sales meeting tonight. Okay, I'll be back. Tonight? It's my anniversary tonight. Dad, I need 308 and a half by 11 reduction. Cheryl, it's 5 o'clock. Dan, you got to make me 12 sets. The front and back page on car stuff. I'm dead. Wrong. Are you kidding? Do you know the different kinds of jobs we got here? Ben, what are you worried about? The Xerox 9200 duplicating system is like a complete print shop in one machine. It automatically feeds and cycles originals, has a computerized programmer that controls the entire system, can duplicate, reduce, and assemble a virtually limitless number of reports, all at the incredible rate of two pages a second. Well, see you tomorrow, Fred. Give her a kiss for me, Stan. Hello, Mrs. Corey. Happy anniversary! It's tomorrow, Stan.
The football is at the 35-yard line of Ohio State. UCLA's got to go to the 16 for a first down. So it's second down, 19 for the Bruins. Sarah, back to throw. Throws it back. Pass is complete to Eddie Ayers, number 30, and we have a penalty flag thrown on the field. He had a man downfield open for a moment, couldn't see it. He was kind of running for his life. Going to the sidelines. We have an ineligible receiver downfield fall against UCLA. So there is a costly mistake with only 5.55 to go in the game. Backs him up. It backs him up so far, Keith, that it's going to be awfully difficult to make a first down. When you were delayed as long as Shara was that time, uh, getting rid of the ball, and offensive linemen sometimes believe he's going to run with it. They do get across the line of scrimmage, and uh, then when he does throw, you get the penalty that's being marked off now. Football comes all the way back to the 50-yard line. It'll be second down and 34. A little bit of an uphill climb. And when you're down by 18 and 5.45 to play in the game, that's much trouble. Sarah back to throw. Gets away from Brzezinski. He gets Eddie Ayers down at the 35-yard line. He gained 15, but he's still got a lot to go. Howard Cosell, Saturday Night Live with Howard. Follows the ball game here in the Western time zone, Pacific time zone. I'm entertained with the idea that Yogi Berra, Billy Martin, Billy Burton, and Gene Mock. I believe somebody told me they were going to sing. I thought Gene was playing golf all the time. It might be they're going to sing the blues together. <laughs> Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell following tonight's game in the Pacific time zone. Third down from the 35. Third and 19. It's pass, you know that. It's picked off by Ken Kuhn, the linebacker for Ohio State. At the 31-yard line, and the Buckeyes have stopped the Bruins again. So don't tell me that Ohio State can't play defense. Holy smokes, that defensive bunch have played virtually all of the fourth quarter and most of the third quarter, and they're still tough. When the pressure was on them, they made that goal line stand. Game could have moved back with UCLA in contention had they been able to score from their first down at about the five-yard line. North Carolina last week scored the first touchdown against them. UCLA jarred them early, but since then, they've been some. Archie Griffin. <laughs> Never gets tired. He's got a first down for Ohio State at the UCLA 46-yard line. He just gained 22, and he's well over 100 yards now for a 25th consecutive game. And there's the 100-yard trail with Archie. Look at it. Just look at it. Ohio State has not made, incidentally, a backfield substitution in this entire football game. It's Griffin again. And Archie goes from the 46 to about the 41. They'll give him four. Call it the 42. Jeff Smith, the tackle for UCLA, and the clock grinds along. Griffin now, 21 carries, 161 yards. And it looks like Ohio State uh, feels a little bit embarrassed if they want to get seven more points up there, even though the game is theirs without any question at this point. 3.55 to play. Cornelius Green makes the pass, can't throw it. Going down by Manu Tuaia Sosopo, a freshman out of Long Beach. Tuaia Sosopo. I was uh, wondering if he made a lot of very good plays, Keith, if I'd be able to handle that name. Manu Suya Sosopo. <laughs> He's going to be a great player, so we better get used to pronouncing that name. <laughs> Loss is back to the 47-yard line. It'll be third down, uh, about 12. Ball's right in between the 47 48. Green sprints out. That's the throw. Gets it all. Griffin on the sidelines. He's got it. Archie's got a first down for the Bucks at the UCLA 25. He gained 22. Here's Bell. 
There's an interesting game going on in Portland, Oregon tonight. Grambling leading the nation as the number two, college number two uh, team is taking on Oregon State and is trailing three to nothing. That's division two and Grambling is number one of the nation. This is the first opportunity to play a major college team and it's quite a ball game. Ohio State at the UCLA 25 yard line. Jeff Logan now is in replacing Archie Griffin. That's the first backfield substitution Woody Hayes has made. Cornelius Green makes it, keeps it, turns it, goes to the 22 for three yards. Stay tuned at the end of the game for the Prudential College scoreboard show. Werner Wolf and Dave Dials bring you scores of the games around the country today, and there were some surprises. The Prudential College scoreboard immediately following tonight's telecast. Two fifteen to go in the game. Thirty-eight twenty Ohio State. Green gives the ball, keeps it. Beautiful fake throws. Slash Nichols just tipped away. Just tipped away by Pat Smith, number eighty-eight. Pat Nichols had the step on his man, but Smith made a good play. Fast Nagel, the wing back for Ohio State, driving straight downfield to the outside, then turning around deep. Looks like he's open, but Pat Smith gets high in the air to bat the ball away. That cold towel being applied to Ken Kuhn, the Ohio State linebacker, number 54. He came off the field. He's played a great football game, and he just simply keeled over. It's hot out there. Lou Williott now in the Ohio State backfield, replacing Pete Johnson. There's Kenny. Bashnagel stays in, so does Green. On third down and eight, Green keeping. Hit, drop at the 25-yard line. So Woody Hayes now, with only a minute and 50 seconds, play in the game, going for three points, sending the reserves in. As Green walks off. Minute 40 now. And this is the kind of a play that uh, you need to practice on. You don't uh, get too many chances for your field goal kicker in game competition. 42-yard field goal try for Clavin. The snap was high. Bashnagel handled it well. The kick looks pretty good to me. It is good. 42-yard field goal by Tom Clavin. With a minute 24 to play, it's now 41-20. You know, we begin working long before we open our Pizza Hut restaurant. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Emery's got us another load of fresh vegetables. Jack and Rudy mix up fresh dough. The way we make pizza and pasta and sandwiches makes for some extra work. But it's a lot of fun, too. And when that first customer walks in, we're ready. People here really are the best. And I ought to know, I'm Seth Adams, the manager. Who wants to be treated like just another beautiful body? I got a brain. So I... Bev, get a new Hager top. It mixes and matches with... Connie, Hager slacks to give me a variety of ways to express my individuality. For less than $45, I'm more than a beautiful body. I'm a sex object. Hager slacks mix and match with Hager tops for less than $50. Because looking good doesn't have to cost a lot. Thanks, Hager. Oh. Brian Bashnagel was shaken up on that extra on that field goal try and which was successful for 42 yards. Somebody just simply ran over the top of him. Took a while to get Brian up, but he walked off under his own power. Sladeni now will kick it off. There he is on the bench getting a drink of water. It's been a hot night for the Buckeyes. They're not accustomed to this kind of heat this time of the year. Sladeni's kick now. And it's Gerald Thomas. He gets it back out around the 22-yard line. So now, the clock shows 119 to play, 41-20, Ohio State settling for the field goal. UCLA flurried and threatened in the fourth quarter, but could not punch it in as the Buckeye defense hung in there. A lot of respect that Ohio State has for this UCLA offensive team. They still have most of their starting offensive team, defensive team in the game. Jarrah back to throw. Gets his pass off to the sidelines, and the pass is complete. 
to Jerry Robinson, number 84. Very soft contained type defense uh, by Ohio State. Uh, not a big rush uh, trying to cover in the secondary. They mark him just a little bit short of the first down. So just about a nine and a half yard pickup on that play. Ball is at just short of the 20, uh, 32. Got to go to the 32. Charlotte going to six if he can find it. Gets his pass off. It is caught by Robinson. It was tipped right into the arms of Robinson and a first down at the Ohio State 45 yard line. 24 yards. Here's Jim. You know, it's funny, it doesn't seem that hot to us down here tonight, but I guess it's getting a little chillier up in Ohio because the two Ohio State players that you have seen injured in the past few minutes, Ken Kuhn and Brian Bashnagel, are both the victims of heat. Bashnagel has a heat cramp and Kuhn has heat prostration. Heat. First down, UCLA. They come back strong here in the second half, but too little, too late. 47 seconds to play in the game and Sharon to throw again. Look at that Eddie Beeman chasing. The pass overthrown intended for Robinson. That Eddie Beeman has got great movement. He's a 6'2", 246-pound sophomore, and he's getting better every game, according to the Ohio State coaches. Now we get some defensive changes for Ohio State as Midlam comes out and Leonard Mills goes in. Cassidy stays there. So does Griffin and Fox in the secondary with 40 seconds to play in the game. But an interesting football game. Severn Reese now is in at the wingback position number one for UCLA. Jarrah with time to throw. Now they chase him out of the pocket. His pass is incomplete, almost picked off. Now we get a call on the flag dropped at the feet of the Ohio State defender. It was Leonard Mills, number 20, in the red shirt. I think it was a good call, Keith. He did hit him before the ball got there, and it was definitely playing the man instead of the ball. Defensive pass interference. And 34 seconds remain to play in the game. They'll move the chains along to the 40-yard line and make it a first down for UCLA. Trying to throw the ball downfield, had the ball almost slip out of his hands and seemed to drop on the ground. There's no grounding of the ball called as the pressure was put on again by Eddie Beeman, and here's Bill. Well, there were some great players on the field tonight, and it was very difficult to pick the outstanding offensive and defensive players, but here they are for UCLA, the outstanding defensive player of the game, Cliff Frazier, their great nose guard, and the outstanding offensive player of tonight's game, Cornelius Green, the quarterback of the Ohio State Buckeyes. To each of their schools, on behalf of Chevrolet, goes $1,000 into the general scholarship fund. Heat. Jarrah steps into the pocket, throws it deep downfield. Intended for the flanker, Severn Reese, a sophomore out of Wilmington, California, and he could get nowhere near it. Green tonight. Six out of nine in passing for 97 yards, 24 carries for 118 yards, and two touchdowns. And he did it when the game was in doubt, Keith, right. when the pressure was really on. Right. Of course, Archie Griffin had a great night himself as he continues to roll along, gaining more than 100 yards per game. Archie had two touchdowns and 161 yards tonight. First time he scored this season. But Cornelius Green was so dominant early in the going, and this big guy in the middle for the UCLA defensive line, he, he's really something. his pass off it is intercepted with only 13 seconds to play in a ball game Joe Allegro a sophomore out of West Pittsburgh Pennsylvania number 22 is jumping with joy coming off the field with his interception awfully tough to throw the ball as Sarah knows when everybody in the defensive team is playing pass all the way there was a fake draw on the play totally ignored as it should have been by the Ohio State defense and the interception resulted with 13 seconds remaining on the game clock, we invite you to stay tuned for the Prudential College Scoreboard Show with Werner Wolf and Dave Diles coming up right after tonight's telecast. Prudential College Scoreboard. Boy, there were a lot of points scored today by a lot of teams. 
All right, we have Rod Gerald, a freshman out of Dallas, Texas, running with the football, and welcome to Division I football, young man. As time is gone. And so the Ohio State Buckeyes come west, play on grass, and play at night. Beat the UCLA Bruins 41 to 20. Gillette introduces Track 2 Shave Cream. New, different than ordinary shave creams. Because Track 2 is Gillette's before and after shave cream. Before you shave, it softens whiskers for the smoothest shave possible. After you shave, special after-shave conditioners keep your skin soft and smooth. Conditioners that fight after-shave dryness. New Track 2 Shave Cream with after-shave conditioners. Introducing the Hardhead Pen, new from Flair, featuring me, the Hardhead. I'm the whole point. You get it? The point of this new pen. <laughs> I'm different, because I write like a ballpoint and a felt tip. Look at this. I'm really solid. So the Hardhead Pen writes a smooth, clean line, like a ballpoint, but it also draws with bold, colorful ink, like a felt tip Flair. The Hardhead Pen, featuring me, the Hardhead, new from Flair. Thank you very much. Well, standing with me right now is the offensive star of tonight's game, Cornelius Green, the great quarterback of Ohio State. Corny, you played a heck of a ball game. Thank you, Bill. Well, it's a hot night out here tonight, too. Yes, I know it is, and, uh, and Ohio State played well, and I think probably toward the end there suffered a little bit because of the heat. And I want you to know that uh, Chevrolet will be sending a $1,000 check to Ohio State University in your name to go in the General Scholarship Fund because of your performance here tonight. Well, thank you. I hope whoever can get the scholarship can use it with a worthy cause. Let's talk a little bit about this game. Did you expect uh, that uh, UCLA would, would go out that quickly against you and just in, what, a minute 19 seconds after they had the ball, they scored? Well, I know UCLA. UCLA got a real explosive offense. They got a real big line. They had a good line. They got, and John Sher is a real great quarterback. They got good backs, and I knew they had a great line. Our defense had to contain Sher, and they did a pretty good job. Well, I'll tell you one thing. That great run that you made gave the Bucks the, what would you call it, the momentum to carry them out to that 7-7 seven seven time. Well, that was a pass play, really, and um, we got the end down, and I just kept rolling out, and it was just with great blocking. I was able to score. Okay, Cornelius, congratulations to you. It'll be a good trip back to Columbus, and we'll see you on November the 22nd when you take on Michigan. Yes, sir. Thank you. Incidentally, we tried to get Cliff Frazier over here, the defensive star of tonight's game, but Cliff uh, made it quickly into the dressing room, and we couldn't do that. But $1,000 goes into the General Scholarship Fund of UCLA by Chevrolet in Cliff Frazier's name for his outstanding game. That's the second time, incidentally, he's won it. Okay, Keith. Remember the Prudential College scoreboard coming up in just a moment. Keith Jackson along with Bud Wilkinson, Bill Fleming, Jim Lampley saying so long from Los Angeles. Travel arrangements made through promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United offering bicentennial vacations to more of your land than any other airline. Come celebrate and save with United's bicentennial fair. Lift provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Final score, Ohio State 41, UCLA 20. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Jill Danko has taken hostage on the Rookies, Tuesday at 9, 8 Central on ABC. The Prudential College Scoreboard is brought to you by Prudential. For life, health, auto, or home insurance, when you think about your financial security, see a Prudential agent. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential Insurance. Well, a late good evening to all of you in the eastern part of the country anyway. It's kind of early out west. My name is Dave Diles, and with me is Warner Wolf, and of course the young ladies behind us who give us scores from all around the country. Warner, a couple of scores very unfavorable today for the top ten. That's right, Dave. Two losers in the top ten. Two teams came from behind. First of all, as you just watched here on ABC, Ohio State beating UCLA 41-20. to You might have to give Woody Hayes the boo of the week, however, with an 18-point lead and one minute left. He kicks a field goal. As you saw, Archie Griffin gains over 100 yards for his 25th regular season consecutive game. 
in perhaps the best game of the day, Oklahoma beats Colorado 21 to 20. But the story here, Oklahoma led 21 to 14. Colorado scored with a minute 19 left to make it 21-20, and they did not go for the two-point conversion. They went for the one point and missed. Coach Bill Mallory may be second guest all season. Number three ranked USC came from behind. They trailed 10-0 first quarter and they beat Iowa 27-16. Ricky Bell 163 yards in 26 carries. Number four ranked Nebraska trailing 9-7 at the half came back and beat Miami 31-16. Number five ranked Missouri loses to Michigan 31 to seven. Michigan even had at one time an all freshman offensive backfield. Number six ranked Texas A&M shuts out Kansas State 10 to nothing. A&M the number one defensive team in the country now has given up an average of five points per game. Tonight, number seventh ranked Texas beats Utah State 61 to seven and next week it's Texas against Oklahoma. Number eighth ranked Notre Dame loses to Michigan State 10 to three. It was three three in the final period and State set it up on a 76 yard run. Number ninth ranked Alabama beats Mississippi 32 to six. And in University Park, Pennsylvania, number 10th ranked Penn State beats Kentucky 10 to three. We'll be back with more scores and highlights in just a moment. Green roses. <laughs> Ow! Oh, oh. Green bricks! Who's going to pay for all this? I'll call my insurance, Prudential. That life, house, house. I've got a piece of the rock for my house. Now a Prudential agent can provide car and homeowner's insurance. Call a Prudential office. You might even save some money. It's nice to save money with someone you know. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential Insurance. Well, before we tuck you in, let's check in on some games that were significant games played during the daylight hours today in the Ivy League, Princeton over Columbia, 27 to seven behind quarterback Ron Beebel. Brown, one of the Ivy League favorites, a winner over Penn by a score of 17 to eight, although Brown was penalized 156 yards. The Naval Academy getting 132 yards out of Jerry Goodwin, blanking the Air Force 17 to nothing. Tony Dorsett got 84 yards as the Pitt Panthers downed Duke of the ACC 14 to nothing. North Carolina, once trailing 14 to zip, came back and beat Virginia 31 to 28. Quarterback Larry Dick ran for one and passed for one as Maryland down Syracuse 24 to seven. And when's the last time you ever heard of Shug Jordan's Auburn team losing its first four of the season? Well, it's happened now. Virginia Tech, a three touchdown underdog, beating Auburn by a score of 23 to 16. Miami of Ohio kind of makes it a habit to kick off the Big Ten team, did it today with the fumble prone Purdue bobbling the ball seven times. Miami the winner 14 to three. And Kansas over Wisconsin 41 to seven. Billy Merrick with the only Badger touchdown. He needs three points now to tie Tom Harmon. And it was Oklahoma State's a perfect record now 4-0 defeating Texas Tech 17 to 16. And our producers old SMU Mustangs went down to defeat today at the hands of the West Virginia Mountaineers 28 to 22. But Bob Goodrich has a new baby in the house. He's not too unhappy. And Stanford getting four TD passes from quarterback Mike Cordova rolled over Army 67 to 14. And Oregon's Ducks have now lost a dozen straight. Washington beat them 27 to 17. Warner. All right, Dave, tonight, Boston College over Villanova, 41 to 12. In this game, Boston College quarterback Mike Kruzik, 13 for 16, 208 yards. In the Southern Conference tonight, the Citadel, 21, William & Mary, 6. In Greenville, North Carolina, it was Richmond, 17, East Carolina, 14. And in Greenville, South Carolina, on a field goal with 10 seconds left, VMI, 13, Furman, 10. Baylor and South Carolina tonight in Columbia, South Carolina. And South Carolina beats Baylor 24 to 13. It was Florida 34, LSU 6. And in a game, all field goals, Vanderbilt 6, Tulane 3. Dave? One of the best quarterbacks in the nation is Gene Swick of Toledo. He was 18 out of 33 tonight for 291 yards, but not enough as Dayton defeated the Toledo Rockets by a score of 24 to 13. Swick is a guy who's closing in on Jim Plunkett's all-time career total offense mark. Central Michigan had an easy afternoon against Illinois State. The victory was 42 to seven Central Michigan over Illinois State. North Texas State and Memphis State had a wild one tonight down in Memphis State and Memphis State winning its second game of the season. The score in that one was 21 to 19. 
Wichita State, which hadn't scored in its last three games, beat Louisville fourth time in a row. Louisville's been defeated 13 to 10. Texas Arlington over West Texas State. The score was 39 to 7. We have some other scores, some other highlights, and we'll have those for you right after this. Don't just take our word for it. Ask your relatives. Two priests. Ask your friends. Three. Your neighbors. Two. <laughs> Even strangers. Find out just how many satisfied customers. I have four pieces. Four. Have more than one piece of the rock. Two Prudential Life Insurance policies. The fact is, five out of every ten policies Prudential rights are for people who already have a piece of the rock. That means more people come back to Prudential for another piece of the rock than ever get started with most other life insurance companies. Three pieces of the rock so far. I wonder if there's any left. When you think about your financial security, see a Prudential agent. Come to a company that people come back to. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential Insurance. In Little Rock tonight, Arkansas and TCU 19-8. Arkansas beats Texas Christian. In Tucson, at the half, 28-6, Arizona over Northwestern. In Tempe, Arizona tonight, Arizona State 20-0 over Idaho at the half. In Las Cruces, New Mexico, it's New Mexico at trailing Tulsa 28-7 in the final period. And... In the final period, it's Iowa State 31, Utah 3. Dave? Warner Craig Penrose, who's second in the nation in passing, must be having a super night tonight out on the West Coast. San Diego State undefeated in four games, leading Fullerton State 45-7 at the half. Grambling leading Division II with a perfect 3-0 mark, taking on DeAndros' Oregon State team, and Grambling leads 7-3 in the second period. Texas, El Paso, and Pacific at the half. It's Pacific leading 24-3. And Swarthmore now has lost 31 in a row. And also, Little Slippery Rock got beat today. We'll have a couple of final notes after this. Bert. Bert, your car. Jeepers, you insured? Yeah, Prudential. Life insurance won't take care of that waiting pool in your back seat. Well, I've got a piece of the rock. For my... My car. Now a Prudential agent can provide car and homeowner's insurance. Call a Prudential office. You might even save some money. It's nice to save money. For someone you know. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential insurance. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. It's an hour of top comedy this Wednesday night with the crazy antics of Robin Hood and his merry men on When Things Were Rotten at 8, 7 central on ABC.